This music is terrible. What a loser. <laughs> I, I get that a lot. I get some, every once in a while I'll get someone going, this music sucks. Play some Avenged Sevenfold or like Evanescence or something. It's Give always, it's always a dude with the worst possible music suggestion going <laughs> like, this music's fucking gay, dude. Bring me to life. I was listening to fucking like David Byrne one time and a guy was just like, this fucking blows, bro. Put on fucking... Like you, you blow, dude. Yeah. David Byrne. Put on some fucking Hawthorne Heights, dude. Play some fucking good jams, <laughs> dude. Lovers, yeah. bro. Put on some fucking Bring Me the Horizon. <laughs> so what I'm saying is you're gay, you suck. Uh, this music rules, this vibe rules. Go away. Yeah, fuck well, you. Dude, no, thanks for coming and doing the stream, bro. Thank you for having me, dude. So this excited to be what here. What a magnanimous occasion. So excited to be here. Pretty sure that's what magnanimous means. I'm sure. <laughs> so you saw a crazy show last night? On Friday, yeah. On Friday? Yeah, at Penn, at the Annenberg Center. And are you on a mailing list for this? Because I feel like these kind of shows come up pretty frequently with you. No, I have a class. I took, I, I, uh, so the semester just started. I have a class called um, World Performances. And we just go to different this is, world So this is homework? This is homework. <laughs> okay. It was so sick. All right, so you went to the Annenberg Center. I went to the Annenberg Center, and I saw a play called Fideli di Amore, and it was not a play. It was actually a What's one- What's Fideli di Amore? Is it like Truth and Love or something it's, like that? Uh, Love's Faithful. Love is Faithful. Oh, okay. Love's Faithful. Okay. And it was a, a one-woman production. It was an hour-long, like, epic poem okay. about the visions of Dante Alighieri's last days, or last day on Earth before he died of malaria. So and, he was hallucinating? Yeah, basically. And it was, like, kind of like his, like, his different visions, like, right before he died. There were seven of them. And it was this woman. She was the... She was... She won the Italian equivalent of the Oscar for Best Actress four times. Damn. It was well, now, let's, what's the competition like in Italy? That seems sick. That's like where the movies are made. Mm, it, is it? I don't know. Yeah, I think you're making some assumptions. I don't know, but it, it used to be. I, they definitely... That used to be like the peak. Italian cinema? Yeah. Maybe French cinema. I mean, also French, but also it like, like Federico Fellini. That was like Okay, I know Fellini is uh, regarded. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. We're getting off track. <laughs> I'm saying... This is okay. So this is prestigious. This is a prestigious this performance. This is a prestigious uh, performance. The director came out in the beginning, and he was like, "Hey guys, like we've toured all over the world. Like we've never been to the United States. First, first show in the United States. Like it's an hour. Fucking strap in. This is all in Italian, and there was a, a a British lady translating for him. Okay. So I was like sick. And then he, when he was talking, he grabbed her arm like this at one point, and I said, "Yo." But, That's Italian. Yeah. <laughs> that was the bona fides. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then this thing started, and this woman did like it was. Did he like, do like? <laughs> yeah. Start my play, madam. Because she was like, because he said something, and then in Italian, and she translated it as like the mist, and then he looked at her and was like the fog. And then he, she was like, the fog, and then he grabbed Damn. her arm, and he was like, Miss Goose, Miss Goose, dumb bitch. He really had that energy. Okay, 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 okay. And then, but then, so there's this woman just started, it was the entire, it was this woman on stage, there was a crown of thorns in the shape of a donkey head on the ground next to her. Behind her is like an abstract panel, like, 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 bars kind of in the shape of like, like a Rothko kind of okay similar and then behind that was one trumpet player nice and the entire time there was this kind of like ambient like electronic like soundscape being played okay and did you get high as hell for this I was pretty high it was pretty <laughs> did cool. you get high to go to your homework <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then they to get into different uh, like visions the the music would get really really loud and it felt like it was like washing over the audience and the trumpet player would be like it was a super high pitch yeah and yeah. it was so sick <laughs> and then she would just go and she'd just be reading this poem and she would do all the voices for it and she would like dance and like move around it was intense dude was it all in italian it was all in italian and there was um, that seems dense there were super titles on the top it was very dense in like English. So I was reading along and watching this woman fucking go nuts. 
and it was so good. I fucking wept. I wept. It was oh, so man, good. Oh man, I'm so jealous. It was like it started with the fog, the fog creeping into his room. Not the mist. Into not the mist, the fog. The fog, obviously. Creeping. Creeping in and like, like kind of setting the scene, uh -huh. and then it gets really loud. And, and the, she does the voice of the fog is like creepy. She's like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then I was like, oh. and then, and then she uh, goes into like, it's the devil, the devil from the inferno. And then the donkey, the little donkey that carried him around, uh, Dante Alighieri, around Italy after he was exiled from Florence. Mm -hmm. He was exiled from Florence, didn't, didn't know, know that. that. He was a politician. All the great masters were kind of, like, fucked around with in their life. Yeah, and the, 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 the director made that very clear. He said, Florence said that he was corrupt in reality. Florence, Florence. was corrupt. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, dude, Michelangelo was the same situation. He was getting fucking yerked around his dude, entire life. Dude, why are they fucking? They with can't these guys? just let cool dudes make why great are shit. They fucking with these. Let guys? Make, let cool dudes make great shit and get out of their fucking face. Yeah, he said, "I was thinking about dying." Here's fucking three hundred pages <laughs> on it, and they said, "Gay, <laughs> gay, corrupt. get out of here, corrupt." You're corrupt. Yeah, you got go paid to, off. Go to Venice, idiot. Damn, we're on level two hype train. Well, Fuck thanks. Thank yeah. you guys. Thank you, Chris, for the Dom description. I bash daily for the Prime Dom description. Big Tie fifty two hundred. Thank you for the five months of Prime Dom descriptions. Kenny, thank you very much. God damn, yeah, the bros are in. God damn, Paging Doctor Crutch. Thank you for the brand new, fresh out of the package Prime Dom description. If you have Amazon Prime, you can connect it to your Twitch for free. You get a free Dom description. That's what's up. It helps me out. It helps you out. Who just, wait, was that five down descriptions? What the fuck? Hell yeah. Humongous, thank you for the read down descriptions. Hell yeah. God damn, they're going to put us on the front page so everyone can hear about this dumb Italian bitch. <laughs> I'm sorry, these are the director's words, not mine. She sounds like a talented True. performer. Right? Show some damn respect. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, so it ripped. It ripped. There was, the, the ambient sound was so good. The lighting was so. Now, what good. was it? The kind of like a low, like a low tone, like hum with like swelling kind electronic of, shit. Kind of. Or was it just like? Goof, 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 goof. It was pretty low. It was very ambient, kind of, and until until they were. Do 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 I would kill. I would like. That's Italian classical music. <laughs> Darude? <laughs> Dante Darude? <laughs> he was actually exiled from uh, the Vatican. <laughs> Daru Sandstorm? Darude. Darude, Sandstorm, got him. They said, this is this is an affront to God. And it's like, little did they When know, really, that's the closest thing he to... He was God. Yeah, exactly. He was God. That's the closest thing to holiness we have. <laughs> Oh. Well, he'll be recognized after he does. For sure. <laughs> there was just like the entire thing was just so good. She did all these voices. I was I was gasping, I was weeping. She, I, they threw some surprises in there, some twists. Dude, they were for a while they were just kind of like they were just like doing thing. They would just like be like telling this like story and then they would be go one part they just started doing like this like crazy like critique of Italy and like the Italian government. That, that was the shit back then, though. It was crazy. In the middle of your play, you had to be like, and the, the ruling class, and everyone would go, ooh. And I, I did. Yeah. I went, ooh. <laughs> it, it, it was like, ooh. And then they started, like, projecting, like, paintings of angels crying on the screen as this one was screaming about how corrupt Italy was. And I said, yes. <gasps> yes. I was like, damn, this is so sick. And she was screaming at it. And I was like, damn, this is hype as hell. It was compelling to say the least. Now, how much did it cost? I don't know. It was free. I went for class. What the hell? Yeah. Did you have like a homework pass, like a like a I, student accepted pass? I showed up to I showed up to the will call and I said Temple University, please, and they said here's a ticket. Did you have to pr prove this at all? No, Let me I said see Temple where I can get University. away with that. You can probably just go. Yeah, I'm gonna try like Dunkin' Donuts or something. Yeah, just go uh, Temple, Temple University, University please. Oh, here's your donut, sir. <laughs> now, how how crowded was it? Was it, it like full? It was like pretty full. It was pretty full. It was like a smaller, like, black box theater, but it was, 
like 200 seats. Okay. And there was a kid in my from my class sitting next to me, stone faced the entire time. It was really kind of bothering me. Did he not like it, or was he going just like, ah, yes, I understand this probably more than everybody else? I think he just kind of like didn't care. Oh, what a dickhead. Which sucks. That really does suck. Because like I was, I like I was saying, I was gasping, I was weeping. Yeah. It was kind of like uh, not even because it was like emotional. It was kind of just like overwhelming in a way like i'm very into that and and i was just kind of like they're just like on the edge of my seat the entire time and i looked over and this guy was like <laughs> the entire time the entire time it was pissing me off and this woman this older woman sitting next to me was gasping the entire time and i was like thank god yeah jesus thank Christ, god she dude. gets it that was actually why i was so happy when we went to blue man group and all those autistic children were just doing this in their seats i was like thank god those kids are here dude all these grown-ups aren't getting this the retarded children who are just like <laughs> They got so I was like, yeah, it. my fucking <laughs> people, dude. <laughs> my fucking homies are here. <laughs> we all had the same reaction. <laughs> For sure. It's a damn, and blue. we were all looking down in the splash zone, just like, God damn, I, I wish. wish. I wish. I wish I was down there getting fucking creamed by Blue Man True. Group. <laughs> I wouldn't regurgitate a marshmallow. <laughs> I, saw, uh, I saw you send me that organ performance. At the Wanamaker's? Oh, yeah? Or Wanamaker building? Is that where it is? No, wait, not no, the Wanamaker. the Kimmel it's, Center. the Kimmel Center. No. There's another, so that date I think doesn't work for me, mm -hmm. I think, but there's another lady, I think R5 might have booked it. There's a lady coming to do a crazy organ performance. Um, let me look that up because I, I am trying to check out, uh, here's the thing. I feel like pipe organ shit is about to go away. Yeah, I agree. It's so sick though. There we go. Uh, first of all, we are so extremely pleased to announce that our very special, this is from nine days ago, Callie Malone pipe organ performance was moved from the First Unitarian Church, which would have been sick. That would have been so cool. But it's now it's at the First Presbyterian Church mm. on March 24th, which I think is a better date. Um, I would absolutely go. Yeah. You'd think they'd put a fucking link in here for it. Dickheads. Is it not on sale yet? No, it's on sale, I believe. All right, all right. We, yeah, we got to check out pipe organs. Absolutely. At the Latvian Society? Lily's at the Latvian Society, so it said down there. What the hell is the, what's the Latvian Society? Oh, that's the Lily's. I don't know. Yeah, Mar so March 24th, Callie Malone with Stephen O'Malley. I'm not familiar with the first Presbyterian church. I'm familiar with it. Me neither. But this is a little tiny organ. That's pretty. Oh, and it's sold out. What the hell? <clears throat> what the fuck, man? There's another show at the Annenberg Center next week, and it's uh, it's this one guy, uh, reciting Beowulf while playing a Germanic harp. Oh, I, it would have been cool if he was like speed running a GameCube game, though. That would be so, <laughs> <It's> so true. <laughs> I guess there's a gap. I mean, there's there's a hole in the market. Yeah, I think it's a hole that you need to what, fill. Yeah. What if I started doing That's like bro. monologues? We'll go back. I would if I started doing monologues where I was just playing a video game but also delivering like Beowulf. I think that'd be sick. You can do Damn Dude, he is hype. That's a very fancy shirt. It's frilly shirt. Yeah. The Germanic harp. He definitely Can I get a trailer for this? rules, dude. Can I get a trailer for this? You might have to YouTube him. I know. Well, I mean put it in here program notes that one lady looked like a uh, Lisa Cardellini there yeah. who's Lisa Cardellini from um, freaks and geeks ah and from dead to me with ALS ridden Christina Applegate she has ALS I think so yeah in or real life or MS yeah yeah I think it's MS I think L ALS turns you into Stephen Hawking it's like her too she's like frail and decrepit now it's like really sad I know she's not hot but she's, I don't know about decrepit no she's getting there like it's like the new season of dead TV came out and she's like very I saw a trailer and was like Gee. deteriorated yeah, yeah she I thought she was just getting old I thought old ladies just got kind of like uh, disabled looking me too <laughs> <laughs> and then my day told me and I was, I was like, trying oh, to be nice well that's not as that's not as fun What's this? Oh man, I can't scroll up. Not mind if I drop some Philly comedy names for some stories? Hmm. Good. Noah doesn't like to kiss and tell. Noah's fucked all of your favorite comedians. So true. <laughs> Noah, Noah's gotten plowed by there. all your favorite comics. Been there. Been there, done that. 
<laughs> yeah, scroll that all the way down. Bro, how is it 10.30 a.m.? These guys aren't talking about Eagles football. Butterly, you fat fuck. Are you anti-football? Could you imagine if... You, could you imagine if I was like... Hey everybody, I'm doing a, t a Twitch stream. Come hang out. And everyone got here, and I'd be like, "How cool was the Eagles go yesterday?" Birds, go fucking birds, dude. Dude. My you Uber driver hit me with the Go Birds when I got out today. Totally respectable. Mm -hmm. That's totally great. We're we're actually having a conversation instead of just being like, "The New York Giants are fucking gay, dude." <laughs> yeah, That's all. It goes Daniel? without saying. It's in the fucking air. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you guys heard about harps and Beowulf and GameCube? <laughs> Do you guys like Smash? You fucking pussy. I don't know you. Don't talk. Don't ever fucking talk to me like that. Suck my dick. <laughs> I'll beat the fuck out of you. Come to Philly right now. Here's my. Hold on. I'm typing my address, dude. No. Dude, we're I'm gonna roll up I'm on you. Gonna, dude, no one's gonna fuck I'm you. I'm gonna dude. roll up. No one's on gonna you, bottom you into a wall. <laughs> no one's gonna back it up into you and shatter your pelvis. You keep fucking talking like You're that, not dude. Not ready, dude. <laughs> I'm gonna eat the fuck out. Don't of your ever ass. do that shit again. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah, anyway, man. Beowulf would probably rip. Mm -hmm. Benjamin Bagby. I've, um... Did, didn't they make a CGI Beowulf? Probably. That'd be sick. Remember? I feel like they're always trying to redo it. Oh, I think most stories are actually just Beowulf. It's yeah. either Beowulf or, um, Hamlet. Yeah. I think they made a CGI Beowulf. And they made him, like, a giant monster, and... That's crazy. Wait, everything was CGI. Oh, it was Polar Express. <laughs> they made a Polar Express Beowulf. <laughs> that shit sucks. <laughs> Look at that. That looks worse than like an average. This looks like cell phone video game graphics. Yeah, that's crazy. That's like an ad you'd get on Candy Crush. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Ebony Online right here. Look at that. Wow. Damn, he's jacked. They should not make dudes that shiny, ever. <laughs> Men should be rugged. Ladies are shiny, okay? She's so shiny. Is that Angelina Jolie? Yeah, Jolie's? she's so plump in here, too. Look at that. Her lips are looking plump. Damn. You know what would be really funny is if you casted Angelina Jolie for a CGI movie role, and then you just had her pussy lips out the whole time. <laughs> like, it's not even you. It's, it's CGI. CGI. Like, and you just give her big flapping pussy <laughs> lips that are always on screen. <laughs> it says in your contract right here. Like in the Romeo and Juliet. Mm -hmm. When they were like 15, and they were like, You're actually not going to be naked. And then they said, Just kidding. Do you want this movie to fail, you dumb bitch? Yeah, you want to make money? This is, this is art. Look at that. Yeah, I remember. This is like, this is like the Mummy 4. <laughs> did you know that Brendan Fraser didn't actually get fat as fuck for the whale? <laughs> I thought he did. I thought he did too. I thought he did. I thought that's why everyone was so hyped. Turns out he got when... molested. <laughs> <laughs> when they when he showed up at that award ceremony and they gave him the applause and he cried, I was like, oh, he lost a little bit of the weight. <laughs> Truly, I thought that they applauded him because he lost so much weight. He put on so much weight and lost it. And then they were like, it's a fat suit. And I was like, what the fuck? Right, give a fuck. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Well, you know he got in trouble for a fat suit, right? Really? You're not supposed to fat suit anymore. He was supposed to be you're 600 not, pounds. You're not supposed. You're not supposed to play anyone that you're not actually. So it's even to the point where if you play a trans person in a movie, which would make sense, right? Like if I played a trans woman, I'm a I'm a man with a woman's brain. Yeah. My, and I play a character who's actually like living as a woman, although like biologically male. I don't actually identify as trans, so that's a transgression. That's pardon, <laughs> pardon the phrase, dude. That's a transgression. That's so you crazy. shouldn't wear a fat suit because they should hire fat actors. Like Lizzo? Should we get Lizzo yeah, to be the whale? Lizzo should have been the whale. <laughs> <laughs> but then it's like, I don't know. Do you want that call? Like, yo, listen, no. we need a fat, pathetic tub of soup. No. Can You're you... like close to 600 pounds. Why don't you hop on this? Yeah, hey, Lori Beth Dimberg, are you busy? <laughs> we need a cow. We need an absolute freak of a fat human. Yeah, I think it's that's so fun because you feel a lot better if it's a skinny guy because yeah. you're like, oh, he's not actually doing that to himself. Right. So then, but then also, like, let's be honest, dude. If you're so, f if you're fat suit fat in real life, could you really be that good at anything? No. Could you be the best actor? No. You can't. You could never be Brendan Fraser. You, you could never make the mummy. You would never. Dude. You could never make the mummy. You could never hold a torch and like <laughs> hold a hand up to like protect a woman behind you. You'd never be able to do that. You'd be way too fucking fat. Yeah. So let's let let's let specialists, let's let people who are good at acting be actors, and then let's let fat people who are as fat as fuck just be the fattest 
Like, don't I don't agree. try to. You know what I'm saying? I agree. No, I agree. Like, don't don't hire a fat person for a good actor, but do hire a good actor to be a fat person. Yeah, unless the fat person has proved himself. But I, I'm saying, how could how could you be so dedicated that you're the best at something and still also be 600 pounds? What if he's like I don't know, like Marlon Brando? Marlon Brando towards the end. But he started at well, okay. And he was just like a crazy person, but you're like, damn, he rips. Yeah, but he did the work up front. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. saying, like, uh, we need obese 21 year old women who get hot boyfriends in movies. And it's yeah. like, no, dude. That's not real. <laughs> They're not good at acting. Yeah, no, that's definitely a good point. I'm actually, uh, the reason I haven't seen The Whale is because he's so fucking fat. I'm like, no, dude, he was hot in my youth. Yeah. Don't ruin Brendan Fraser's hot legacy. Absolutely. By putting him on. That's why I'm against it. It's so kind of unfortunate. You know? I, yeah. He, like, he's... Dude, he was a heart a heartthrob in the 90s. He was, like, a... He, he played tall in movies. I don't know how tall he actually is. Yeah. But he was a tall heartthrob. He was George of the Jungle. He cornered the action movie genre. Mm -hmm. He was on the red carpet going, like, yeah, I did some of my own stunts, but, you know, I, I'm here to make money. Yeah. And then he got his fucking... He got molested. And now they're like, put on the fat. Dude, this is the Jewish... This is the most Jewish shit ever. <laughs> <laughs> they molested Brendan Fraser and then kicked him out of Hollywood, and they were like, "We'll let you back in, but you have to be a, a fat suit guy now." <laughs> you and have now, to be pounds. when they when Brendan Fraser dies, probably pretty young now that he's so fucked up. Yeah. When he dies early, and they're doing like the in memoriam, it's gonna be him like in the fat suit. Yeah. And they're gonna put that on his tombstone. True. They he's did that on purpose. Been dude. Cursed by they Jews. They did that on purpose because <laughs> they're gonna be like, "Oh, the only thing that's like that has any like Oscar buzz whatsoever, you're a million pounds." Exactly. They <laughs> cemented his legacy what this is what dude they're gonna do it with will smith they're gonna put will smith in a dress and then that's gonna be his prestige film bro i don't think so i don't think i don't think big will is gonna play like that you're 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 too violent for hollywood you <laughs> proved that you're you proved everything that we believe about you're you the people fog, dude. you're the fog <laughs> i'm the fucking mist <laughs> oh, <sometimes laughs> speaking of speaking of that kind of during that show a lot of it kind of sounded super like anti-semitic <laughs> whenever they were talking about like they started going off about like arms dealers and like the global Bolsheviks, yeah and i was like chill and then they started like they started showing like they projected like <laughs> like like cities and people bustling around and then like like the stock market fucking chart like yeah and then a guy like, going trending Ooh. down and i was like and they were like you did this and i was like who did this <laughs> jesus christ dante needs to chill dante needs to chill but yeah that's what they're gonna do that's the, that's what they do. They go, oh, do you want to come back into Hollywood? <laughs> Why don't you put on this dress? Damn. And then he's going to get in trouble. They're going to say Will Smith should not play a trans character. Mm. Then he's going to get in trouble, and it's going to be his final role, but it's going to be like, but it's such a masterpiece of a performance. It kind of transcends, ex again, excuse the <laughs> phrase. <laughs> They're going to make Will Smith trans to let him back in, and then he's going to... He's just he's in that new movie right now. I know, and I don't even know what it's about. Is it about Africa? He's like a like a black soldier or something like that. Yeah. I gotta be honest, dude. I don't like the way that he acts in real life, so I'm not gonna warn him. <laughs> yeah, I get that. <laughs> I don't want my kids seeing that and then like looking up to him. Yeah. And no, then absolutely. he slaps people. He slaps people? He slapped Chris Rock? For being hilarious? Chris Rock, who basically we're doing the, I have the same job as him. Yeah. I'm like I know I know this fat EMT guy that failed the firefighter physical fitness exam mm -hmm. and now he's an EMT and now like nationwide anytime there's like a firefighter injured he'll post the news article and then like a picture of like a firefighter badge with a black stripe across it <laughs> that's that's how I felt after Chris Rock got slapped I said this is all of us getting slapped we lost one on the front lines true we, one of us got slapped dude it's such a shame because he did nothing about it too <laughs> I mean, put me in there. And you're just like, damn. Chris. I, I, this is a dark hole. I don't want to go back down this. Oh man, remember when his brother, his brother was like, bro, Will Smith, I'll beat your fucking ass. Chris Rock said Chris that. Chris Rock's brother. Chris Rock's brother said that. Yeah, he was like, you're gonna swing on my brother. Try something with me. And he should have done it at the award ceremony That'd be though. Sick if he ran up and just rocked Will Smith. Yeah. That From be behind, sick. like spun his head. Oh. <laughs> go. He's yeah. Have to move to so Bel Air. <laughs> Brendan Fraser corrected Adam Sandler that his name is pronounced Razor. 
not the TV Frasier. show Frasier. Yeah. Well, no, it's. I yeah, mean, he has this issue. He was molested. He was. Yeah. <laughs> he was diddled by the, As the an global adult, elites. Dude, could you imagine reaching adulthood, going like, "Thank God I never got molested," and then you get molested? Like Terry Crews. <laughs> yeah, but Terry Crews, come on, man. <laughs> I know, but it's so come sad. On, it's so sad. He probably it. flexed his bird when he got touched. <laughs> 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 It's so sad just to see a guy like that get so like just like demasculated. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. You know what? Because you, here's your mind immediately goes to what if that was me? Yeah. What if I was getting molested? And what would it what would it take to keep me quiet or to make me be like make me doubt myself? Because I think anyone molests me, I'll kill them. Yeah. I'll kill you. But him at that point, like. Terry Crews, he was also getting his wife was like ringing him out publicly and everything. For what, getting molested? No, for because he was like addicted to porn, and he was talking about and his wife like brought him on Doctor Phil and was like, No way, what? And was like, and he was like, and she was like, You have fucking emotion problems. You're addicted to porn, and he had just had to sit there with his fucking tail between his legs and be You're like, You're making this up. No, I swear to God. Terry Crews says pornography addiction almost destroyed his marriage. Yeah, his wife mother fucked him on TV. I think they were on Dr. Phil. I got married in 1989 to the most beautiful woman on earth. I thought that once I got married, the porn would go away. <laughs> That's probably how he said it. <laughs> Dave, could you imagine getting addicted to porn in 1989, though? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine having to get like a storage locker for VHS Stacks tapes of VH. and <laughs> magazines and shit? I gotta tell you though, if I had to put my money on it, older black dudes probably had the gnarliest porn setups. No, it was definitely so sick. Back not, in the day, not even putting it sick. away when they're done with it. This is sick. <laughs> <laughs> it rewinds and puts it back in the sleeve. The fuck you mean? What is this? <laughs> That's my beat off mag. <laughs> 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 You don't like it? Get out of my living room! Them girls voluptuous. <laughs> it was no different than any other thing that would numb you, be it drugs, be it alcohol. The 12 steps works for a lot. Dude, he had to go to meetings for porn. No, like, his wife, like, publicly just, like, flayed him. It was terrible. Let's find this. Let's find this, because it's not mentioned in his mirror. What the hell? I feel like it was on Dr. Phil. Jimmy Kimmel. He talked about porn addiction with Jimmy Kimmel. It's so unfortunate. Oh, uh, man. Admits porn nearly ended his marriage. Oh, here we go. This looks like what we're looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rebecca and I have been able to manage this family, this career, <laughs> oh, over the anything. last 28 years, oh, I got just by being a team. My wife was trying to get me on the right plan, and there was the ego. I was a card-carrying member of this toxic masculinity, and it all came through with me realizing that I didn't know everything. When we got married, we started having a family. She put everything on hold for 20 years. Dude, Derek he has a show on, f like, at this point, he probably is on uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, right? Yeah, he's he at this point, he is, like, hosting he's America's like the, Got Talent and shit. He's, got, he's at the height of his career. He's at the top. And they're like, yo, do us a favor. You got to go on Dr. Phil and talk about crushing your meat. Sometimes I would have three jobs at the same time. And she was like, I've got the kids. I'm taking care of the home. All during the success of the career, I've had an addiction to pornography. It was always hidden and secret and this and that, and I never told my wife during our whole marriage. And I finally, finally broke. When I first confronted Terry, we had it out. He told me about the prostitute, he told me about all the porn things. I said, you know we're done, right? He's like, what, what? I told you everything. I said, that's good, but now Damn, she played it's him. over. That woke me up. I was like, I need to get better for me. The hardest part was knowing that someone I loved, respected, and Is she a musician, by the way? I saw that piano. Like I thought he was. Maybe. And now it's like a lie. Yeah. Everything they got a like, grand piano back there. She was at a keyboard I earlier. I believe in the heart of every man. She's trying to advance her music career. Little bit of pride, Ugh. this little bit of arrogance that says, oh, she won't leave. But when he saw that I meant business, I think it really challenged him. He says that he made the commitment to get better, whether or not he got us back. Eventually, Rebecca did choose to come back. I had to earn it. So he got he and got caught with a prostitute, he and then everything else came out. Very yeah, but it's like 
it was really don't not put prostitute like on the same level mouth. as cranking was, your hog. Yeah, but she what is. His mouth was. And he went to. Or is that just how they're spinning it? I think that's how he's spinning it. Like, oh, the prostitute was definitely just part of like me beating off too much, and she had to be like. Of PTSD. I don't know. <laughs> Rebecca Cruz is my backbone when Let me finish that someone song. knows you from good all the way to the rottenest, dirtiest part of you and loves you anyway. That's the rarity. That's where you want to be. <laughs> oh, they're doing that classic handhold. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. That's the I'm in trouble handhold. She's not looking at him. Politician, the wife standing by him. Tremendous pleasure. You guys have been married 28 years, right? Mm hmm. And, uh, that's. And, uh, Clap it up. You, know, you Damn, and I were Robin. talking earlier. There have been ups and downs, uh, yes. clearly. And you said that you had a come to Jesus moment. Uh, in your marriage that almost led to divorce. Describe that moment for us. Well, my husband was away on location shooting a project and we got into an argument because he was out late with his cast members, but it turned out he was out late with one cast member. I started to hammer him with questions and all of a sudden he starts coming out of his skin with these confessions. 10 years ago I did this, 13 years ago I did this and I have this addiction to pornography and he starts to tell me all this horrible, horrible stuff. And my immediate reaction was to throw him out. And I did. Dude, she takes, Obviously, it she takes, she fills a cereal a bowl with Xanax every morning. You said, I thought, looks like she has a bunch of pussies on her scarf. <laughs> I'm still young and I've got my groove and I'm going to green pussies <laughs> and I'm going to keep it moving. And Damn, dude. I was, yes. When I, I can't when imagine. When I said to him, you know we're done, right? He's like, what? Yeah. What? I say, yes, I'm going to leave your raggedy behind and I'm going to take your money too. Yeah. And I said, yeah. girl. Yeah. Oh, girl. She said, for me <laughs> and my new man. That's <laughs> Is she black? I think so. She's light skinned it. Yo. Because I know no dark, Sorry, no dark queens putting up man. with this. No, absolutely not. It, honey. This is full of shit. He's got, he's got black seniority because he's darker. Yeah. She's kind of saying like what goes. True. You a past. She's trying. <clears throat> She's trying. It's her. That it's them. It's everyone else. Damn. <laughs> she didn't vote Biden. She ain't black. You know, I did not go to rehab to get my wife back. I don't know. He's still talking. I went there because I needed to be a better person. Okay, Tony. I don't know, dude. Okay, Tony. I don't know about all that. Let's look up her music. What if she rips, though? She might. She was tickling the ivories a little bit. Hmm? Let's see. Let's Breathless. look up Rebecca. Oh, she got a music video. Oliver Nelson Five remix. years ago. Let's check this out. Fuck Rebecca off. King Cruz. Fuck off pavement. <laughs> it looks like Dr. Phil filmed this as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he did! <laughs> He's got to play himself apologizing in her music video. Oh God. <laughs> this is rocket league music. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah, she has cannons. She's stacked. She has cannons. That's crazy. Dude, I was just chilling in the penthouse with your mad wife. That's, he's in hell. We need to bust Terry Crews out of this. Like, dude, actually, the hookers might have been a good idea. This sucks. Jeez. Whoa. Holy shit. She's got big old lady cannons. That's crazy. They definitely hit her knees.
Damn. White ladies definitely love oh, her. Oh, chair dancing. Christ, crazy. This, <laughs> these fucking milkers are fucked up. It's crazy. That's a lot of side boob for a 65 year old woman. That's why Tyra's saying. Seriously. She's bad as hell. <laughs> Ooh. Damn, they got some choreography. And I have paid $125,000 to hire Maurice Smiles <laughs> as my choreographer. <laughs> They're just like wedding dancing. He's watching. He's in a porno theater. <laughs> <laughs> it's him and Pee Wee Herman. Oh, no. He's cranking it to child videos. No. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. What is happening? Is he going to get her back? Is he going to save her from the club? Yeah, they're actually. It turns out uh, the the Ritz Five was playing my childhood movies. I got a ticket, and I went. I went and watched myself as a boy, and I remembered that I don't want to be off anymore. I want to. I want to titty fuck my old wife. Yeah, it's a truly. Why? Why jerk off the porn when your wife has cannons? Doctor Phil made me realize I want to titty fuck an old lady until I die. <laughs> and that's okay. And I have to do it for me. I got to titty fuck this old bitch for me, <laughs> not for anyone else but myself. I went to Diddy Rehab. <laughs> Damn. This is so personal. This is crazy. <laughs> that dude was feeling himself. This <laughs> pervert Damn. right here. I'd love to be an extra in this video. Yeah. Uh, that guy keeps trying to give us Molly. Can we get rid of him, please? <laughs> Yeah, can we get him out of the shot? He's trying to give these girls Molly. <laughs> he keeps rubbing himself. <laughs> Dude, what the hell was that? that Does was she have any crazy. more music videos? Rebecca King Cruz. Uh, I don't really want the Queen Cruz, but reaching for the top. Regina Madre. Her name is Regina Madre now. What the hell? Is she Latina? Is she Latina? X? What the hell? She changed her name to Regina Madre. Damn. Oh, that's what's it called? That's that's a uh, that's Queen Mom. In Spanish. <laughs> Regina Madre's no, queen mom. No, it's not. I swear to God. <laughs> Regina, is, Regina is queen. Oh or I guess in like God. royalty. Oh, this looks like it's about police violence. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not funny. <laughs> Damn, Let's see hills. what she's got to say, yeah. Just a house in the hills. I never cried this is actually this ripped off the song from the end credits of Wally. -E. <laughs> Have you ever heard that song? I think it might be um not Peter Frampton. I don't know the last time I saw Wally. -E. Oh dude. It fucks though. This sounds exactly Evie. like Eva. Wally and credits? I don't know. This is what she she ripped off this song, I think. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, maybe it's not that close. <laughs> no, this is actually art. And what she made is schlock. <laughs> no! It's, it's similar. It's Close. definitely similar. You can see where I, it hit me. Parallel thinking. <laughs> Two great, great minus. minus. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, she's going out on her balcony on in the Beverly Hills. True, that's right. It does. It reminds me of Skyfall. Oh, well, that's terrible. Why couldn't oh, you no, guys? Oh no, she's turning no, look. into a werewolf. No, I, I. This is just proving my point more. That that same motherfucker that was complaining about the music in the beginning. Why couldn't you guys go down an Andre the Giant rabbit hole? 
Bro, go away. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing that we do is going to make you happy. Fulfillment for you, I'm sorry, is not in here today. Find something else to do with your time, dude. <laughs> I'm, t I'm telling you this, I want you to enjoy yourself. Anything that we do for you is going to be gay. Butterly, I will kill you. Not a chance, dude. You're a pussy, too. <laughs> On top of all of it, you're a fucking bitch. <laughs> That's the saddest part. You could be working away from that. Instead, you've thrown your face into the quicksand. <laughs> oh, my God. It always bums me out for dudes when they just can't find enjoyment. What, I mean, we're watching art. She's a she-wolf. Get into the she-wolf. That's... Eating fucking Terry Crews' soul. This is so fucking great. No. <laughs> what? No. What? It's not even police brutality. She tried to attack them as a wolf. Oh, there it is. So what, you can't even kill werewolves as a black teenager anymore? Now she's gone? I'm trying to track the metaphor. That was a person. That werewolf was a person. Yeah, it's her. This is about George Floyd being on drugs when he was killed by Derek Chauvin. <laughs> <laughs> She's comparing George Floyd to a werewolf. That's insane. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. It seems like it. I'm pretty, I'm pretty fucking sure. Yeah. You're not you and you're hungry, dude. What the hell? This is crazy. You know, you know, people complain when like rich people kind of like infiltrate art, right? Yeah. And they try to express themselves and it, and it ends up just like, it's so derivative that you can't even track the source anymore. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. But Never I think historically sad. art has always been for the, the comfortable. Yeah, no, absolutely. But like, it's like... Poor people consume art and they go like, oh, I, I'm so poor that I can't afford food, but at least I have meaning. And then the reality is that like, it's just, it's just rich sex addicts jerking themselves off. But I think that for the most part, it's kind of like, it's poor people creating the art and then kind of rich people like giving themselves a pat on the back for it. Maybe. Damn, Terry. Yeah, That's Terry. I know. As long as they make them think about me. He's making... He's making two million dollars an episode for Brooklyn Nine-Nine. And then his wife's like, Terry, remember you said you'd put on the mustache because you jerked off. <laughs> remember you said you remember you said we could shoot my music video? He said, oh, baby. You could just leave this here. Look, I, I Whoa, she has a now that's what I call music album cover. Did you see that? Me my song. Look at the look at the Regina Madre. That's that's a ripoff that of now. That's what I call that music. I mean, if you're reaching for the top, you go song. with what works. Yeah. Can let me go. No strings attached. Oh. Well, now that things aren't professional, <laughs> how about you and I get a little dinner, some cocktails? Ooh. Mm. You need to loosen up. Hey, a little bit of cock and tail. Oh. Meet me at Moonlight Rollaway tonight. Damn, Terry wow. Crews' life sucks. It's so unfortunate. Wow. Well, he's a jacked old black guy. Honestly, being married to him is a mistake. Yeah. But he got it. it oh he got God. married so early. Terry, Terry Crews, I'm telling, and I'm saying this as like uh, supportive. I'm not like making fun of anybody. I'm not like putting down entire races or anything. That guy's pretending to play guitar. That's crazy. Um, he should be on the bus just like hollering at every girl that gets on. Yes. That's what jacked old black guys should be doing. Yes. You should be, first of all, you're standing on the bus and you're holding onto the top railing yes. with fingerless gloves on. Yes. Very, very short ass. or no sleeves. And every girl that gets on, you're wearing headphones and you're talking too loud. And you're just like, damn. Uh -huh. Oh, shit. Hello, every beautiful. girl that gets on. Yeah. Hello, Hello beautiful. Good morning, beautiful. Uh -huh. Pushing up. You're like, not you have out of the ordinary sunglasses on yes and you're pushing them up damn okay baby they're like welder's glasses yeah just wearing them full, sunglasses. full reflective yes not wraparounds but like an uncommon shape yes 
Every time a girl walks by, you go, God damn! Damn, this is she ripped off Kurt Vile too. This is a Kurt Vile music video. This is a modern baseball music video as well. She has the same hair as the lady from the modern she, baseball video. She moves like a uh, dollar store action figure. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Like, you don't have to do anything. You're set. No, not at all. Terry should have uh, made all these videos and then put them, like, <laughs> released them, like, unlisted on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, baby, I posted it. Yeah. I posted your music video. Gave her the controller now turned leave me off. Alone. If you don't knock your shit off, you're going to get me molested again. <laughs> <laughs> he has to keep doing jobs because she keeps blowing their budget on music videos. <laughs> And he just keeps getting diddled <laughs> by old Jews. I'll be working till I'm goddamn 85 years old. You keep making these motherfucking music videos. <laughs> Hello, old my booty hole. Hello, Old Spice. I need more music video money. <laughs> yes, I will take my meat out for a Super Bowl commercial. I just need more goddamn music video money. <laughs> She's milking me. <laughs> oh, my God. Dude. Yeah, they keep they keep honey potting him. And then he just, he just keeps getting honey potted over and over again. Back, he just has to stand girl. in little underwear and go. Ah! The remix is what I heard. He's begging for her back again. This, this right here banging. That sucks. This banging. That sucks, man. Poor That's guy. So unfortunate. What can we do for Terry Crews? We gotta get, we gotta free him. We gotta free Terry. Yo, so do do you know the song "Walk Don't Run" by The Ventures? I think so. That sounds familiar. Okay, so the first time you would have seen it, or the one time you would have, you you know this tune. You know this tune for sure. Ready? Here's them. So the basic theme of tonight's Saturday Night Show is dreams, and uh, I guess we'll fulfill the dreams. This is essentially a guitar standard. Tonight, yeah. there may be a couple of people that they want to see, but I think all in all, for you and the whole family. So this this is this is how people found it, right? Okay, yeah. You'll, you'll know the riff, too. This motherfucker's spitting. That's like, what year is this? 1960, right? Mm -hmm. I was So I was looking this up because I wanted to learn the guitar riff, which, by the way, takes five seconds. It's yeah. incredibly simple. But the first video I found was them, like, they kept doing this for like 20 more years, mm -hmm. and they became the coolest dudes ever. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hold on. Look at the man. Yes. <laughs> yes, dude. Bro, that's your final, that's your Charizard. That's so sick. <laughs> it's so sick, dude. <laughs> Yo. Bro, this is oh, the fucking best. Rules. That dude rules. Bam. That might be the most, pr that's the most expressive... Uh, chord progression of all time. That's so good, dude. And they just like they know it fucking rips. Oh, they're we're playing one of the top hits of all time. It comes an incredibly like easy drum fill that people go whoa. Yes. <laughs> yeah, man. Damn. I, know, I, just, I, I, just, I was just geeked out over this guy yeah, and his he's hat. He's the man, dude. He's the man. And that's a cool guitar. That's the real man in black. For real. I want that guitar pretty bad, actually. That's so sick. Yeah, two minutes. Yeah, that's seriously two minutes. Oh, man. Ooh. 
very much like, uh, you know, the video of Chad Atkins playing the, the entertainer just like on TV. Mm -mm. And you're, it's the easiest thing ever, but you're just like, damn, that rips. Oh, yeah. Well, I, you know what I watched was uh, Brian. That one. Brian, this one? Yeah. Damn, this motherfucker's spitting. He's cooking, dude. Let him cook. Ice cream shot coming. Yeah. <laughs> wait! Wait! <laughs> you running down the street in flip flops. Yeah. You're holding, oh, holding 75 cents in nickels. <laughs> oh, I need ice, a SpongeBob ice cream. Yeah. I need a screwball. <laughs> oh, and he's just feeling it. Bam, 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 bam. How do you take this song so seriously, though? It's like you have to. You have to, or the allure is gone. Ooh, okay. Yeah. They don't show up, but the audience is going. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it home. And then he takes it back. Classical music for fat kids. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that was, that was great. That's so good. Oh, uh, he's gonna wrap it up. Do you fuck with Billy Strings at all? No, it's on my list to fuck with, dude. but it's like one of those things where it's like, when am I gonna jump into Billy Strings? You just got to, dude. Dude, have you ever seen, um,. Brian Setzer plays Sleepwalk by Santo and Johnny. Yes, yes, oh, yes, yes, yes. God, dude, dude, it's so sick. It's so it's, sick. Uh, that was worth it. Um, check, check this out, guys. I mean, it's Brian Setzer, dude, dude. Okay? It's like very obvious music that like, I don't know who's passionate about Brian Setzer. It's a guy that's been around Nobody. for 140 years. He just shreds and does world tours with like a bunch, like a, a brass band. You just have to be like, damn, this is this is but sick. To, like, I don't know, man. If you guys aren't into this, I'm sorry, but this is kind of nasty stuff. Damn, happy Lunar New Year, loss in the sauce. Oh yeah, happy Lunar New Year, everybody. Good luck to you all. What year is it? Is it the year of the rabbit, or did that just happen? Uh, dragon? No, I think it depends on what year you were born. No, it, there's a certain year, and I'm you looking. have certain years. I'm the year of the dragon. Year of the rabbit. Yeah. Hell yeah. So is this my year? It's on like a random cycle. It's like a 12 year cycle. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Brian Setzer and the Guitar Center Managers. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's doing this in Japan, if I'm not mistaken. Uh. He might be the coolest geezer. He's gotta be 70. Definitely. This is, I think, for like... It looks like meatloaf. Ooh. There's like a certain section of like our parents' generation and maybe a little bit older. This is the only music that can make them cry. Not this version, obviously. Yeah. It makes sense though. Oh yeah. Did they play it in La Bamba when Richie dies? I think so. Yeah. They. It's just like. It's just music to get like old ladies wet. That's it. Yeah, this is sentimentality for people that were shell shocked by World War Two. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, just, just cool, very clean, crisp guitar playing and shredding in Asian people's faces. I showed you talking. You know about Takanaka, right? I don't know. Let's see if we can get a live performance from Masayoshi Takanaka. Oh, yes. Oh, dude. Yes, dude. Oh, yes, man. Dude. Yeah, they're, they're getting the crowd wet for him to come out. Damn. I think he's already kind of an old guy here. Japanese, like, city jazz is yeah. the best. So dude. this guy took, like, Japanese fusion guitar, and then he, I think he went to Brazil one time, and he came back, he was like, we need some maracas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, big entrance. Here we go. This is like Spain. Yeah, Chick Corea. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what all those fusion guys were just playing jazz, like, with overdrive pedals on. That's again, who knew it would go so hard? Yeah, I need a vacation, I'm realizing, mm -hmm. as I watch this. Mm -hmm. I need to go somewhere warm. This is just, you're, you're walking along the beach. Yeah. I like to, when I hear this music, I imagine driving along the coast in a convertible. Yes. This is great driving music, summer yeah. driving music. The, this is the wind in your hair, sun in your face. Bring the man out, where is he? There he is! Yes. Oh, dude. Yes! <laughs> yes! Like Look how many people there are! <laughs> Happy, happy, washy, washy. <laughs> That's, I mean, who's doing it bigger than the man with the surfboard guitar? Literally nobody. <laughs> I love seeing, like, the live performances in Japan are the best. No, there's no more enthusiastic crowd. And they kind of don't know what to do, but they're just so hyped. There's a... Ooh, there he goes. Oh my god, that's a massive crowd! <laughs> it's huge, dude. <laughs> There's this video... ...by... ...fucking... I think they're Dead Cowboy, I think it's called. And the song is called Thunderbolt, and they're just kind of like, it's these two guys, and they're just fucking jamming at a festival in Japan, and they're just surrounded by Japanese people that don't know what to do. What was it called? I think it's called, it's called Thunderbolt. This is so good. I think that guitar is a challenge to play. Let's see if he can get on a regular guitar and shred. Oh, He's on the on, beach! Man, come on, don't do this to me. Come on, don't play Wave Ray 64 music and show me pristine teal waters. Uh, take me back, dude. <laughs> Oh, this is brutal. This is killing me. Is that the Loch Ness Monster? Look how clear that water is, dude. That's crazy. This is the most Windows 95 CD-ROM water I've ever seen in my life. Damn, they're definitely in the Bahamas. <sighs> oh man, my children deserve a vacation. Dude, I just got back from Florida. It was the best. Where'd you go? Deerfield Beach. How clear was the water? Crystal, dude. It was 80 degrees every day. The water was a little chilly, but you just stand out and cook a little bit and just go in. It's so, so nice. Oh, is this from India? Oh, uh, maybe? No, I think no. the song is just called Taj Mahal. Taj yeah. Mahal. Whoa! Is that? And you think I'm sexy? Come on, baby, let me know. Whoa! Tajimaha. Uh. 
<laughs> yeah, that's sick, man. That's so sick. What was it called? Thunderbolt? I think so, yeah. It, it's one of those songs that's always like, the videos always just come on my YouTube recommended. Yeah. Lightning Bolt, that's what it's called. Lightning it's this Bolt. one, Dead Cowboy. <laughs> They're just so confused. They're in a panic, dude. They're in a panic. They don't know what to do. The drums are fucking <clears throat> insane. This looks like a Korean zombie movie. It does. <laughs> Sweaty ass. Whoa. No stage. They're just watching. They're just like in a parking lot. A mall parking lot. The microphone is in his mouth the entire time. Well, they do have a stage though. Dude, wait, wait for the drums, dude. Let's go. They've created a sense of anticipation these in this crowd. He just broke the drum drumsticks in half. Drummer uses a contact mic, which is a weird alternate kind of microphone. That's why his voice sounds so fucking lit. Thank you, Wukong. <laughs> this is extremely primal. It's so good, dude. He's manipulating their heartbeats. I don't know if this is, this is like. This is shamanistic for sure. Yeah, dude, imagine just being there in that horde of people. Yeah. And, and you're, dude, I'm telling you, you dude. their, their nervous, uh, nervous system's all synced up. This would be great music to play over like your Unreal Tournament 2004 highlight video. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get into Hella at all? No. Fucking Zach Hill. Uh -uh. Zach Hill is, is the, the best drummer alive right now in my opinion. He's in Hella well, we can and prove that. Death Grips. Oh, okay. He's the drummer Death Grips. in Death Grips. Whoa. He's dying. He's they're killing people. What the hell? They're just in, the, in a parking lot in the middle of the mountains in Japan. I bet there's a hot spring nearby too. Probably. Yeah. I mean indistinguishable from a zombie outbreak. <laughs> <laughs> They might just start biting. I think Asian people might just start biting each other anytime they get too excited. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah, a comfy food. Imagine commanding a horde of Japanese people like that. That's crazy. Damn, COVID started because they just rocked them too hard. White people <laughs> rocked, rocked them, them too yeah. hard. They turned Japanese people into Pikmin, and it was over for the whole world. They ate an infected Pikmin, and it was the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm getting sweaty. 
dude. This is making me sweat. It's cold in here. I'm getting sweaty. It's Damn. So cool. Oh, my God. This dude's going to die. <laughs> He's going to die. They're just fucking raging, dude. Yeah, this is so fucking awesome. <laughs> this is Toyota's company party. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, this just makes you want to move, dude. Yeah. It, does, it makes me want to bite someone's throat and tear a chunk of flesh out. <laughs> <laughs> you probably, like, you couldn't play this inside. Like, this uh, would get crazy. Yeah, no, it would do something to, like, the drywall. Yeah. Like, it would, it would bubble the paint. <laughs> if this is first Unitarian, <laughs> fucking... Yeah, they'd have to do it outside in the courtyard. That would rule. Does he have guitar strings on his bass? I think so, yeah. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> This feels like it's kind of too much for Japanese people. Yeah. It shorts their circuits. <laughs> every, every, every factory resets it. <laughs> they just keep saying All, hello. Everyone here has default settings on. Yeah, everyone here is just like, Oh my god, that is like, gozaimasu, gozaimasu. Arigato gozaimasu. They're not even headbanging, they're just bowing over and over again. Arigato <laughs> gozaimasu. There is nothing better than just kind of like two dudes That's just cool. playing music. Two dudes is the perfect number two dudes for a band. Shredding. It's the perfect number for a band. Can Play fat kids be into this without dude. dying? <laughs> yeah, dude. No, I, I am. I'm here, dude. <laughs> But this would kill a guy in a fat suit. Yes, this would kill Brendan Fraser yeah. on the whale. Damn. You were absolutely right about this. Dude, it's crazy. That guy recording it right there getting nothing off his camera. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, this is definitely like outside of Mount Fuji. Yeah, there's like a mystical energy from the mountains. The fog is rolling in. The fog. <laughs> the fog. Not the mist, you dumb fog bitch. Fog rolling in. You lie, me fuck. Damn. This is. They're saying this is bad. Is the song finally ending? Suck my dick. This is you for our dorks. Yeah, sorry, dudes. This is cool. <laughs> it's cool watching a dude just bully the Japanese crowd sonically. Sorry if that's not for you. Sorry if you're gay. <laughs> that's not my problem. <laughs> dude, he indu he, he I like he, I, maybe you don't get what's going on. He induced a trance state into a, like a massive crowd of polite Asians. These people, look, oh, look at these people's faces, by the way. They're distraught. <laughs> they're, they're, they're absolutely distraught. They created hysteria among the most polite populace yeah. on the planet. Before this, they were just going... They're being... <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're being physically... He's, he's causing Asians to be physically restrained. 
It's like these guys see sumo all the time and don't react. <laughs> yeah. They don't these react. People, these people were politely kneeling on pillows outside five minutes before this. <laughs> yeah. I've been doing the dishes while I watch this. Now I need all new plates and glasses. Yeah. Yes, dude. Yeah, smash all of your dinnerware. He's dripping in sweat, dude. Incredible, dude. And he actually did rip on drunk. He put he put it all out there. Wow. Yeah, they definitely got more novelty out of that than the music itself would lend. Yes. Like if you're listening to a recording of that, you're a psychopath. Yeah. But if you're in a throng you're feeling of Japanese it. people And you're in it. Yeah. You're in it. You're fucked. You're absolutely fucked. That's sick. They said, Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yeah, that rules. Yeah, dude. That was fucking nasty. Oh man. Dude. Yeah, I've never seen anyone do that to Asian people before. It's so good. Hella does the same thing. It's so sick. They love destroying Asian people. <laughs> I'm gonna pull that up. I gotta get more coffee. You need more coffee? I'd love some. Biblical right. violence is the best one. Where's that at? That one right there. This one right here. That All right, right, yeah, there. we're watching that live next. Yes. All right, we'll be right back. We gotta get more coffee. Bye, guys. All right, we're back, you fucking pussies. <laughs> you guys, you guys have earned a little bit more stream, but we reserve the right to just fucking cut you off. <laughs> we'll fuck, we'll cut you motherfuckers off at any point. We can watch music videos all day. We don't fucking need you guys. <laughs> you guys want you guys want to fucking bitch about stuff? We'll, I'll, where's the, the end stream? Right? It's the fog. I got my. I want you guys to know. I got my finger on the end stream button right here. <laughs> you keep acting like fucking pussies. It's over. Are we at the checkpoint? Yeah, we're at an hour seventeen. We made it to a checkpoint. We can restart from here if we need to. Dude, I had a dream last night that Mary Jo uh, decided to leave me. Really? Not even in like an argument. She was just like, not, I'm done. not even like a storm out. Not even like I fucked up. It wasn't even a Terry Crews situation. She was just <laughs> like, it's best if I go. And I was just like, what? That's the worst thing that could happen. And here's the problem it didn't feel like a dream. And I smoked a ton of weed last night for the Lunar New Year. Mm -hmm. We were celebrating. Mm -hmm. So I, I went to bed uh, under the assumption dreams would be impossible. Yeah. You smoke enough weed, you're dream proof. Mm hmm. And I don't typically dream very much or remember them. Mm -hmm. uh, an exception is if I have a fever. Mm -hmm. If I have a fever, I'll sleep enough and I'll be in a delirium and I'll have a bizarre dream. And sometimes they shake me. But last night, I went to bed extremely stoned. I passed out on the couch with Mary Jo watching cool videos. Mm -hmm. And I had a dream right before I woke up. And honestly, the feeling carried over into being awake. Damn. So for a couple of minutes this morning, I thought I was divorced, and it was the darkest feeling That's I've so scary. ever had. That's so scary. And it it was even in the it was even in the in the dream. <clears throat> it was like um, I had to process the fact that my marriage was over, mm -hmm. and that I was now like a single man, a single father. And I remember the logistics weren't very troublesome. The logistics of being a single father were not troublesome. Mm -hmm. It was manageable. It was just, you're a single man now. And I have a suspicion that in the in the, in the the secret chambers of a married man's heart, mm -hmm. I actually, I know this for a fact, I know married men who fantasize about being single. They, in their heart, they go, oh, if I was single though, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't, I don't indulge that like impulse. And maybe, maybe it's me trying to be a good boy, but also maybe I, uh, there's a possibility I'm just not interested in it yeah and i lived it i lived i lived it yeah i as far as like i, I was i'll say my nerve my nervous system experienced uh, a divorce from my wife yeah it was the most miserable sensation i've ever had in my life it sounds terrible i it, it was there was no spark of like I, I think some guys think that if they got divorced at like 40, that they would reclaim a bit of their youth. Mm -hmm. There was none of that. I don't think that. Yeah, I, that's that's truly like visions of grandeur. I feel it was it was the it was the worst. She she's still asleep. She doesn't know this yet. She doesn't know that I had I had to deal with this. It was the it, I can't I, I there's no way it was like uh like the loss of a parent or something. Yeah, that sounds there, awful. There was, there was no part of that was like, whoa, I can go go-karting with my boys whenever <laughs> I want. I can chase pussy. It was 
the bottom. Yeah. It was the app. It was bedrock. It was. I've reached emotional bedrock, and I. I don't know. I don't know. Like what? What I? What the purpose of this? I. I don't know. I'm not one of those guys that thinks like dreams have a purpose. But I, man, I oh man, away. I was rocked to my core. I think that was. I think that was your body kind of just reassuring you. I hope so. That you're like on. You're on the path. You know. Like you're like. But what if what if it was trying to tell me that like something's off? What if I need to fix something? What if that was a warning and I don't know what the warning was for? Maybe, but I, it seems like it like it happened and then you were just fucking miserable. That is exactly what happened. Yeah, so it's like I think that that's your body being like you know, you're in a good place right now. I think someone yesterday told me that divorce, or maybe it was in a video, but divorce is typically initiated by women. Yeah, and I. In the conversation, I went, I wonder if that's true. And that was the end of me thinking about mm -hmm. it. It didn't resonate. It didn't like, what if? It was just like, oh, interesting fact. I wonder if that's true. And then 4.30 this morning, it was like, it like it went up in the air. And 4.30 this morning, it like, it cratered <laughs> into my skull. I think uh, that makes sense that I think like divorce is more of like a women thing. I think guys, uh, guys really have a tough time being alone. Guys have a tough time being alone, and I think, for the most part, if if a man wants to leave a relationship, it's typically for a very selfish reason. Yeah. And I I think women kind of get, like, amped up by their girls. Yeah. Like, girls are... And uh, maybe I'm generalizing here, but I think for the most part, if a woman goes to her friend group and says, ah, oh, my boyfriend or husband's being such a dick, their friends go, we should go to Atlantic City and hook up with guys. Mm-hmm. It's every, maybe that's not every group of women. That's a crazy thing. That's a crazy thing to do. I've seen it. I've seen it a lot. That's crazy. I know. That's but, why when you get serious with a woman, you have to socially destroy all of her slut friends. Mm. You, you have to sabotage them in the worst ways that you can just so that they never come back. For sure. I mean, but also if if, if your babe has slut friends and they're, and they're acting nefarious like that, it's like you don't want them around anyway. True. That's crazy. It's, uh, I mean... It's ill omens. It's it's like grow up in a way, mm -hmm. kind of. Yeah, I'm trying to get my shit together. Like, okay, I'll stop hanging out with my boys who just want to get fucked up all the time. Mm -hmm. You gotta stop hanging out with your slut friends who yeah. just want to, you know, kind of sabotage all their friends. Yeah. Anyway, dude, I don't know, man. I got that. <laughs> I'm gonna have to. I I did I did extinguish at least one slut friend. I I pulled the band aid off on one at one slut friend, mm -hmm. and. uh she she was an adult slut and it was kind of like um oh man how, i haven't really thought about how to like describe this scenario but i would bet that it's pretty common this was a this was a slut with a lot of slow, social pull mm -hmm. okay so she would she would fuck every dude and every dude that she didn't fuck knew that they could fuck her so she was kind of kept in the back pocket of a lot of people yeah and then she what she would do is she would use that to just like it was like tendrils. It was social tendrils, and they would get in everywhere. Slut mycelium. Yeah, exactly. And so, like, yeah, eventually it would fruit with a terrible social mm. disaster. And it, it, she could kind of, like, manipulate women and men. She was also a bisexual slut. Mm -hmm. They so, all are. Yeah, so she had, like, this crew of, like, just destroyed dykes mm. in her wake. <laughs> <laughs> and, and just dudes that she would just rotate and fuck. Mm. And like dudes that she knew she could fuck, like, and so she kind of like, it was like her spider web. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, if uh, you know, I'm I'm pretty involved with my my wife. I know, like, I know about her friends' problems. I know, like, she she talks to me like when she has a problem. And so I would witness when like another one of their friends would have an issue. This girl would like take charge and kind of try to make it worse, mm -hmm. but seem like she was helping. Yeah, she'd be like, "I care so much about this. I think you should do this," and it'd be like, "Oh no, she's trying to extend your misery because this is saccharine to her. Yeah, she this is this is what she needs. That's evil. Yeah, I know. And I had to be like, I couldn't be like your your slut friend has to go mm -hmm. because it just doesn't. First of all, it doesn't work. Yeah. And second, it's like kind of out of place. Anyway. Yeah. So I saw an opportunity to get rid of this girl forever. And it was, uh, she, she broke her arm, uh, doing something stupid. Mm -hmm. 
and she started a GoFundMe for herself. Mm. She said, I can't, her job depended on tips and mm. she couldn't really perform her job because she had a broken arm. Yeah. So she put up a GoFundMe and she got a bunch of money for it. Mm. And it was at that point, like I, I probably gave her money. Yeah. And everyone was kind of like, oh, okay, she's going to be fine. Yeah. And then she took the money and went on vacation. <laughs> she went on like a, an extravagant trip. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. And like, if you share someone's GoFundMe on, this was years ago. I, I don't even use Facebook anymore. Mm -hmm. But if you share someone's GoFundMe on Facebook and people go, oh, man, I hope she's okay. And then like, here's, it's me in Belize with a cast on my arm. That's evil, You look dude. like a fucking dickhead. Yeah. And, and so... Um, I didn't even, actually, I didn't even mean to pull this thread, but I did. Mm -hmm. I, I went and I, uh, I got a haircut from a, a someone in their friend group mm -hmm. and I Venmoed the tip mm -hmm. and in the note for the tip, I said, this is for arm surgery. <laughs> <laughs> Not even thinking, I, maybe I thought it was private. Maybe I just thought like, who the fuck's ever going to read a Venmo comment? I'm trying to make one lady yeah. I know laugh. Yeah. And so this this woman saw it, and it was just so. <laughs> and now I never have to deal with her again. It's like God bless, fucking good riddance. It's over. Good riddance. Yeah, and but I. I, I That's no so regrets. funny though. That's such. <laughs> it really worked out perfectly. Yeah, I, 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 I feel fortunate that it worked out that way because yeah. I was racking my brain for years. Because in my head, my greatest fear is that like, like. I'm a, I'm a human being. Eventually, I'm going to piss my wife off. Yeah. Eventually, I'm going to do something inconsiderate. And I hope not to. I think the most you can hope for as a man in a committed relationship is you just minimize the number of times you do something inconsiderate that hurts your wife. Yeah. But I know that eventually I'm, I'm going to like disregard her feelings on something or I'm going to like prioritize myself over her in it a happens. way that's going to make her like upset in a way that I can't even appreciate. Yeah. That's what happens. Yeah. And I'm, I, my biggest concern is that she would go to, um, she would go like, Tim's being such a dickhead and that's her right. Yeah. I understand that she has a right to go into group chats and be like, Tim's being such a dickhead right now because there's a chance I'm being a dickhead. For sure. And this girl will be like, you need to get away for a couple days. Let's go to Atlantic City and then just like pump her full of, you know, cheap liquor. Yeah. Until, like, an Italian guy, like, makes out with her. That slaps her for That's, calling it the mist. Yeah, yeah. She gets the misted. <laughs> and so this, I mean, so now this girl's basically dead to us. And That's for the best, though. Absolutely. Yeah. Spa day plus 50 HP. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so I, uh, I, I win. Yeah, I won. absolutely. And I feel like that's going to bring nothing but good. Oh, absolutely. I mean, way, you know, I, I put I put an end to a long, a long pattern of just terrible behavior. Yeah. Kool Aid, thank you for the gift of Dom description. God damn. She was fucking. She was building her web. Mm. She was building her web. You had a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> I, I Luigi's mansioned her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So fuck her. Yeah, dude. It's over. Fuck her. Have you ever had? A, have you ever even attempted to do something like that? Like cut somebody off? Like cut? Like cut second a hand off? though? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I feel like probably, but nothing too extreme. My fucking, in high school, my bae in high school was very annoying as fuck. And that was very much, I think, that, uh, like, I should have gotten out of the situation a lot earlier than I did. But I didn't, and I was kind of trying to spend the entire time just kind of, like, fixing it. Sure. But it never... Did, now, okay, so I can relate to that. Did you ever have a feeling of, like, um, like, selfishness for wanting to get out of it? Like, kind of, Like, am yeah. I a shitty guy because I don't like this? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and she was very much kind of like, I'm going to fucking kill myself. And it's just like, okay. Yeah. And it's like, and it's like, I know you're not, but also it's kind of like, what a shit situation you're putting me in right now. For sure. You know? Yeah. And it's kind of like, we're 16. Why don't you fucking chill out? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why don't you chill out? We're going to the Oxford Valley Mall. <laughs> like... <laughs> Yeah, if my daughter ever tells someone she's gonna kill herself, I'm like, you're such a fucking loser. Dude, Stop. It's like, chill the fuck nah, out. Get off his fucking back. Dude, I had. That was like the worst fucking situation of my life in a way. 
It was very much like it, like her dad would try and like talk to me too. About what? About like her and like being like, we gotta like work this out together. And I'm like, no, we don't kind of. Oh no. I tell, I tell my daughter all the time, like, yo, cut and run. The second you're not having fun as a teenager, get the fuck out. Dude, it fucking sucked. Yeah. It sucked. I remember he picked me up one day, like from my house before I had to go to work and just like drove me around and was like, let's like fucking work this out. And I was like, fuck no. What the hell? Dude, it was crazy. It was crazy. He, I, he, he, he picked me up and was driving me around, and I was like, "You need to drive me to work." And she was like, "And he was like, well, I mean, I think that this is more important, kind of working this out than work." And I was like, "No, it's not. What? No, it's not." Whoa, was he like a therapist or anything? No, dude, he was just like a fucking piece of shit. <laughs> he was just collecting fucking disability and just chilling. Oh my and god. And he was like a baseball coach, like a JV baseball coach. And he was like, he got. <laughs> Listen, got, Noah, I heard you've been thinking about not piping down my daughter literally, anymore. Literally, he was, like, he was just like, we gotta, we gotta work this out. She can't lose you. <laughs> and I think it's because, like, he thought that she was just kind of like a fucking tard. It was oh, just like, sure. you need to help her. And I was like, no one can, dude. <laughs> She's beyond help. No one can. Do you know what her situation now is? She lives. <laughs> She's still 16? <laughs> dude, she lives in Wildwood full time. She's a fucking local now. And she lives with her mom. Her mom lives in Wildwood. Now I don't know if that's cool or dark though. It's dark. Dude. Living in a living in a short town year round, I suspect is great. She lives Bayside too. And it's just like, oh uh, man, not even on the boardwalk side. And you're just like, damn, dude. That's it's, I mean, that's for grandmoms. It's rough. She's living as a grandma it's prematurely. Rough. It's rough, and she just kind of like lives down the shore. And I was like, you can't be having fun. There's nothing going on. You can't be ten in, months out of year. Are you just like hanging out with like random wiggers in shore towns? Like, <laughs> like what are you supposed to do? Like, yeah. What do you do in that situation? There's no nightlife. There's no day life. Yeah. There's you just nothing. Sit there. I think that she's like, she was going to school to be like a nurse or something, as they do. But oh no, dude, it's so tragic. So you could work in like a dead town urgent care. Yes, literally. Yeah, this is the Jersey Shore. Wildwoods, Wildwoods, probably the lowest class but most fun Jersey Shore destination. It's terrifying in a way. And it is now. Now that it's like, dude, did you see Matt tweeted the other day that they should turn malls into Westworld? Mm -mm. <laughs> Matt tweeted that they should turn malls into Westworld, where like you could just go in there and like fuck with like employees That'd and like so shoot them and stuff <laughs> and i i stopped myself from responding but i i was at the willow grove mall while he was while he tweeted that mm. and i wanted to be like yo dude i hate to break it to you but black teens are already west whirling the mall <laughs> dude they are it's crazy the fashion district the gallery former gallery hmm. it's the wild west dude that well that's that was even worse before dude before they crazy. knocked down the gallery yeah. and put up the fashion district that was like a subway station with a Macy's in dude, it. Dude, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. So anyway, that's like that's like living in that is is living in Wildwood full time. It's terrible. It's just kids on like bikes with fat tires doing wheelies on the boardwalk and like trying to start fights. Just like throwing things at you. <laughs> yeah, throwing funnel cakes at you. <laughs> Every time I've been to Wildwood, I've seen just like a brawl on the boardwalk. It's without nuts. fail. It's nuts. It's a dude with keys on a lanyard around his neck, swinging it all around and catching it. He's yes. tetherballing lanyards around his neck and just like <laughs> trying to start fights with people. That's that's 40% of it's people crazy. on the Wildwood Boardwalk at any given time. It's like the Warriors. Yeah. It's like the Warriors. They're just different. It's like- It's the Wiggerers. <laughs> <laughs> it's like race wars for real. Just like on like, on just like, like planks next to the beach. And there's like someone eating funnel cake and someone getting like ice cream, yeah. like a swirly ice cream. And then there's just like Muslim dudes yeah. just rocking. <laughs> yeah, there's dudes with like extremely ornate haircuts who are under 16 years old. And then like special needs adults with like locked arms with a caretaker. And then like a, a wigger couple with like a baby stroller with a kid that's like six years old. Yes. In it. He's walking in the stroller. And at any given time, any two people could fight. At any time. And then there's just the fucking tram car. Just and I just watch yeah. the tram car, please. Watch the tram car. Watch, 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 watch the tram car. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Yeah. That's And it rules. It that's rules. the thing. Is It's awesome. The shore rules. <laughs> the shore is so fun. I like Ocean City, New Jersey, because they have a legit arcade. Yeah. Um, Ocean City rules. They don't have... My cousins live in Ocean City full time. 
okay, that's a little bit more high class. They have Longwood. like a nice house. Yeah, they, it, they, it was a shore house, and they lived in like Abington, and then they moved there. So here, now here's the thing. I almost wish I had like a uh, a Tolkien map of Middle Earth of the Jersey Shore. <laughs> <laughs> now in Wildwood, they've got like legit amusement park level yeah attractions, they have and rides. there's like multiple of them. Now in Ocean City, the rides situation a little more quaint. It's a dry town. And that's a big part of it. True. But I'm saying they don't have any inverted roller coasters. No. They don't have any, let's see, water parks. No, oh, no, they have, they have like of, a little water park. I'm telling of. you, it's quaint. It's very quaint. So it's not as fun as Wildwood, it's but it's nice. It's a little bit easier to enjoy. Yeah. Wildwood's a little bit like hard mode where it's like you take more damage. The enemies are harder, you know, but in, in Ocean City, it's a little bit more of a leisurely pace. It depends on what the mood you're in for. Now, if you if you're staying in the Jersey Shore for like a week, you do a little bit of it all. Mm -hmm. The more north you go, the nicer it gets. On what the, the Jersey hell? Shore, as a gay dude from London, if Butterly ever visited London, I would 100% try to bang him or be banged by him. What pause, the hell? pause, dude. God damn, dude. I'm, come on, don't talk. I'm, I'm still getting over the fact that my wife divorced me in a dream. <laughs> don't tempt me yeah, into flying don't to steal London. Him, dude. <laughs> I respect your choices. Chill. <laughs> now my wife's got to get rid of my slut friends. <laughs> my my gay slut friends. Gay, gay online slut friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Avon by the sea. I don't know. That sounds like it's higher class than I've ever had access it's like to. A, like, I've never done Avalon. No. I've done, uh, like, Asbury Park. Asbury Park rules. I've been to shows there. Yeah. It, the, I like the beach there. That's, like, my go-to beach. Okay. Because it's the closest to, like, my... Where, like, in Bucks County. Oh, okay. We do Long Beach Island. Long Beach Island is really nice. That's an easy day trip. Point Pleasant is really nice. Yeah. I like, uh... Like, Belmar is nice. That... Now, I think that's a little bit Guido, right? It is. Yeah. It is. You ever seen the DJ's video? Go to DJ's in my car. Yes, 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 yes. I got the hat on. You guys, was that on Tosh.0 <laughs> or anything? Anyway, talk Kate games. May. Do you play any video games, Noah? Um, I didn't for a really long time, but then I, I got uh, Xbox Gold again like last week. Mm. So I'm back into it. Do you have Game Pass? I don't know. You, no, you got to get Game I Pass don't think Ultimate. I did. It's uh, let me see if I can pull it up. I like playing Rocket League. I like playing Red Dead. You like playing Rocket League? I love Rock uh, Rocket League's my favorite game. Are you aware that I'm like legitimately nasty at Rocket yes, League? Yes, dude. Oh, okay. Yes. I, I, I watch the streams, bro. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't want to assume. But I've, what's it called? Yeah, I'm not. I used to be pretty good at it, and then I stopped playing for like a year and a half, and then I started playing again, and I'm pretty bad, but I enjoy playing it. Yeah, I got pretty nasty at it in 2016. Mm. Uh, the the second most recent time that I was unemployed mm -hmm. and then I, I got back into it uh, when I started working again and hated my new job yeah it's so fun mm -hmm. I, I think it's so fun because the turnaround is just is so fast so they're going to um oh yeah you're back in the match yeah. they're they're about to change a lot about it and uh, actually it's already being ruined there's a, the, people are using bots in Rocket League so you, you jump into Rocket League and then you start your bot and the bot just plays for you. That sucks. And it is like, it never makes mistakes. It's perfect all the time. And so it's kind of getting, the game's kind of getting ruined. It's like, why are you even playing the game then? Uh, Do you not play the game to have fun? Dude, That's why I play. They're addicted to the rankings. But it's like, they're not even the rank, they're not even real rankings. Bro, you're talking about the the most decrepit brains on the internet. I know. Just posting on Reddit all day saying like, my, I'm fine, okay, but my teammate made me mad. <laughs> you're posting like videos like, tell me how this wasn't a goal. Tell me how. That's insane. I Whoa, really... this is a good question. Who would you rather bang, Miyamoto or Miyazaki? Now, Noah, do you know who Miyamoto is? I don't think I do. Creator of Super Mario. Okay. Do you know who Miyazaki is? No. I'm going to assume we're talking about video game Miyazaki and not Studio Ghibli. Is that Pokemans? Miyazaki. No, that's like uh, Dark Souls and Elden Ring and okay, stuff like that. Okay, okay, okay. Are you familiar with these, the, the Souls games at all? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I think you got to go Mario's creator, though. I think so. That's like, that's the building block. Just so I can tell Fritz, Fritz is on the couch right now wearing a Super Mario cappy. Yeah. Just chilling, watching videos, waiting for Mary, Mary Jo to wake up. So I got to be like, yo... Fritz, just so you know, you know how you Mario's your favorite thing? I fucked the guy that made him. <laughs> I think Miyamoto as well. He uh, he knows who Miyamoto is. He's five years old, and he knows who Miyamoto is. He's like... That's sick. He's like, did you know Miyamoto has a brother named Luigi Moto? <laughs> and I go, Fritz, I don't know if that's true. That might have been a... 
He's watching videos where a guy is like, did you know Miyamoto has a brother named Luigi Moto? And Fritz is like, whoa, new information. Damn. I'm like, Fritz, I'm pretty sure that you're talking about a meme. New Miyamoto fact just dropped. Yeah, he's the fucking man. I can appreciate, I think that... I can appreciate, like, those Souls games and everything, and, like, Elden Ring and fucking Elder Scrolls and shit like that. But, <laughs> like, I can... I have a really hard time, like, continuing with it. Like, Why? when I start playing with it. I don't know, because I, I think it's... It's like too much. I feel like a medieval detective when I'm playing them. I'm yeah. like, I gotta figure out what's going on. I think it's, it's so... I think it's, it's like, so deep. It's, like, too deep for me. Yeah, I don't know. I maybe it seems like daunting to kind of get into. Yes, it absolutely is. But also, like, if you and this, I'm talking philosophically about video games right now, guys. I'm very sorry, but if you if you just accept that you're only going to receive so much information at a given time, it becomes extremely zen-like. Yeah, like you you at you you set yourself on a path. And you accept that, like, I don't know any... Dude, I'm, I'm telling you, it's like an exercise in mindfulness, and then also you get to use cool swords. Mm. And you go, okay, I'm only going to receive the information that I can. I'm only going to progress as far as I can. And then, like, you, I, I'm, I'm telling you there's a Buddhist aspect to playing these fucking ridiculous video games. Oh, no, I for sure. Like, I can definitely see that. Mm. I can definitely see that. And it looks like... It, w it seems sick to be kind of like a part of something like that. But I think that I'm just like at the at the at the point I'm at right now. It seems just like so much. I need Rocket League. I need five minute game yeah. where I'm a little car and I hit a big ball. Yeah, I would say if I was your age, I'd be more focused on the real world. <laughs> but if you were 40 and still autistic, I'd say my my best friend Lucas, seek the moonlight greatsword. <laughs> he loves all those games. He's so into it, and he like I just can't like I don't know. I'm very happy for him. That he does like it and everything, but and he's always like, you got to get into it. Yeah, I, but I, it's almost kind of like it's like, how do you even get into it? You know, in a way. I, I, you know what? I, I do it all without a guide. Mm -hmm. I just, I just throw myself in and I go. I okay, guess you just got to start. I'm a, yeah, I'm a fucking idiot. Yeah, it's my. Uh, you know what? It's kind of like an encapsulation of my approach in real life, mm. where like you could spend a lot of time spinning. This is what I think happens to dudes on like Twitter who are constantly trying to like make very salient points and just embarrassing themselves mm -hmm. it's like oh wow it's funny that we 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 seem to not have enough money to buy arms for ukraine but when you think about it it's only two percent of the united states military but it's just it's like, like dude, okay dude you're you're wasting your brain yeah. you're using your brain the wrong way yeah and so i i try to get as far as that from possible and every day i could just go okay remember rule number one you're a fucking idiot yeah rule number two move forward yeah, and I, I I think that like when I, if if I don't have in my leisure time, if I could play a video game where I get to just like espouse that, mm -hmm. oh, that's their, <laughs> that's it, that's therapeutic. Yeah, I do not read walkthroughs. You better suck. You, so legitly say that shit to my face. I swear to God, <laughs> I swear to God, I'll break your neck, dude. <laughs> walkthroughs. Bro, you ever fucking say walkthroughs in this chat? I'm gonna time you out. Where's the timeout button, dude? You're fucked. Chill. Ever do that again? Chill. Let me see. You're in. You're in timeout for one second. <laughs> All right, punishment over, dude. Don't do that again. <laughs> don't ever do that again. <laughs> Let this. This is a warning to the rest of you. How do I close this? You know what? Uh, you know what? I want to start getting into more. What's I, that? Uh, fucking Star Wars. Yeah. I I don't really know anything about it, and then like. Last month I was with my buddy and he loves Star Wars, so I was just like asking him a bunch of questions about it, and he's getting like really autistically hype on it, and it got me pretty hype on it. Yeah, it's almost like a, a favor to your buddy. Yeah. To um, to get into it. Now here's the problem. Uh, Star Wars is uh over. Yeah. You're too, you're what you're doing is you're discovering a dead civilization. Yeah. And you're gonna say, ooh, some of this is really great, and then like towards the end you're gonna be like, ah, I can see why it fell apart. Yeah. And it's kind of a bummer. Like, I'm at the point now where I've consumed enough of it where now I can't even enjoy what I originally liked. Mm -hmm. So what have you have, what have you checked out so far? I haven't checked out any of it yet. Ooh, okay. I've seen, like, I've seen, like, I've seen, like, the, like, the original movies before. I saw the Clone Wars movie and some of the Clone Wars show, like, the cartoon. Yeah. Um, and that's basically it. And then I would just kind of ask him questions, and then he would get really hype. And then I, it was kind of blowing my mind. 
he was like, did you know that the that fucking what's his name and and Leia are fucking brother sister? And I said, what? <laughs> I said, what? Oh man, <laughs> it's like truly I didn't I don't know anything. But like the surprises were that simple. Yeah. Yeah. Originally. And I and and that got me. And he said that to me, and I said. I said, wow, these guys are fucking storytellers. Yeah. When you realize, like, how big the, the, the galaxy, how big the movie world is originally, where it's like, oh, dude, they're flying between, like, planetary systems, and, like, you, you imagine how big it is, and then the central characters that they've all introduced are all, like, blood relatives. Mm -hmm. You're just like, no fucking way. And now, I mean, honestly, is he still into it now? Yes. Does he like all the new stuff? He doesn't like it that much, but he watches and everything. So I, I got to, I watched The Last Jedi. I watched, I got all the way through episode nine. Mm. And I went, I could pretty much enjoy, I could pretty much enjoy this. Yeah. And then the shows started coming out. Actually, here's the final straw was when they made uh, Boba Fett kind of like an SJW. <laughs> when Boba Fett was like, no, we have to be fair to marginalized people. I was like, Chill, all dude. right, Chill. man. All right. I don't know, <laughs> man. You're, 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 if you're asking me if I get if I get fed to a monster and I somehow survive, I think I go vengeance. Yes. I don't think I go trans rights. Yeah, no, absolutely not. You're, I'm killing everybody. So that Yeah, so that was too much for him to become like a benevolent leader. Yeah. But... Uh, there, I mean, there is a lot of cool shit. Like Rogue One is like a cool. Uh, Rogue One is like cinema. Yeah, I, that's what I. Uh, that's what he was. He was saying it was when the, it started like coming back and they started like making new movies. He was like, "Damn, this could be so." When, sick. when they made Rogue One, I went, "Whoa, Star Wars is about to get sicker than ever." That's what he said. And then, and then Solo came out, and I was like, "All right, that's not as good ro as Rogue One, but that was kind of a fun movie." Yeah. And then just everything since then, I'm just like, oh, man, uh, I thought I was going to like this forever. Damn, that's so unfortunate. The, people say Andor was good, but I, I mean, I watched the new Lord of the Rings show and I'm like, I, I might be, I might just be done with television. Yeah, I get that. I watched the new Lord of the Rings show was so boring and like cheesy that I was just like, oh, man. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I don't know. I'm it, a big YouTube head. I'm, I'm almost only watching YouTube. I Same. Feel. Same. Everything I want is on YouTube. Actually, what I'm into right now is Gobekli Tepe. I've heard of that. Ancient ancient yes. um, megalithic structures. Yes. Dude, there's no explanation. Wild, uh, that shit wilds me out. There's no, there's no explanation for 12,000 year old structures that shouldn't exist based on the technology that they have. Mm -hmm. And then when you find out that like these these significant uh, ancient sites were purposely buried. It's like, oh man, there, there's a great story. Whatever happened there, there's a great fucking story. And it's like you'll never know. No one wants, no one wants them to find out. When the actual experts like hear this stuff, they go, "Shut the fuck up, dude!" No. And it's like, fuck you, dude. There was dinosaurs, and then nothing, and then Egyptians, and it's just like, man, what the? It's fuck? like, little do you know. Man. I'm so sorry. Can I go take a piss really quick? Absolutely. I need to pee so bad. Oh, yeah. I have uh, ants in my pants. Yeah, sure. Uh, let me show you where the bathroom is. All right. Bathroom break. We'll be right back. All right. We're back, pussies. <clears throat> hey, guys. Oh, man. Did all, the, did all the pissing that a guy can do. Feels good. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh. <sighs> man. So, wait, uh, let's see. Did you guys settle the ancient stuff? You guys probably figured that shit out, right? No, Steam Power did not build the pyramid. Sound. They used sound. Here's what I here's what I'm pretty sure happened with the pyramids, and I don't know. Yeah, they had it math advanced math in the ancient times, and also I, I found out last night. This is all Graham Hancock stuff, and he sounds like kind of a lunatic sometimes. But um, there were maps from the 1500s mm -hmm. that included pretty accurate um, uh, charts of Antarctica. Yeah. But it was bigger on the maps than it is now. Mm -hmm. But the f maps in the 1500s were partially based on much older maps. Mm -hmm. And from the time that they say these older maps were from, Antarctica would have been that big. Whoa, but you go to the 1800s and you get like Her Majesty's official map. Yeah. No Antarctica. It's like, you know who came around in the 1700s? Who? The Rothschilds. No way. Yeah. You're saying that they erased Antarctica from I the maps? I think that they definitely could have. I guess so. I feel like... Uh, I like, cause imagine if you like had Antarctica, you know? Imagine the power. You think they were trying to like hide it? They're yeah. like, okay, no one's coming back. Yes. That's ours. Very similar to like uh, Greenland, Iceland. Sure, sure. 
Okay. Wait, did they purposely change the names of Greenland and Iceland? Yes, they called. Well, they called the Vikings called Greenland Greenland because it was icy, and they wanted people to be like, "Oh, that place is sick." And then they'd go there, and they just like starve to death. And then Iceland was Iceland like was lush. Nasty. Ooh. And they were like, "It's actually full of ice. Don't even come here, yeah, guys. Don't even bother. We're here, but it like sucks." Yeah. The, yeah. It's, so we have it. Yeah. Like we're we're at the party right now. Honestly, dude, you probably won't even dig it. Like, it's all dudes. Don't dude. even. Yeah, it's all dudes. It's all dudes. <laughs> Iceland's all dudes. <laughs> It's a sausage fest, dude. <laughs> no, um... Iceland is full of ice, too, but it's also lush in the summer. Yeah, it's not Iceland, as fucking... There's a reason that every white girl is trying to go back to Iceland. So, ooh, Reykjavik. Blue Lagoon. Mm -hmm. My sister went. That seems I'm sick so as fuck. Jealous. It seems sick as fuck, dude. I'm so fucking jealous. Anyway, here's how they built the pyramids. So they had advanced math, right? They also had an understanding of the night sky. Um, there's... There's, like... There's certain angles in the pyramids that line up with certain lunar cycles or something like that. But the way that they built the pyramids was they would do these... And I'm not basing this on anything except for the fact that I heard that they used sound. Mm -hmm. I think what they would do were these massive construction ceremonies where they did sort of like a... Like a transcendental like chant together. Mm -hmm. And they would find the frequencies that would lift... They would, it would reduce the friction between two very, very he heavy pieces of stone. And you could just... It was almost like it was hovering because it was just... You, I mean, you could do it if every... If the entire populace was your slaves and then also you had all the Jews as slaves. Yeah. You could do like a massive like... That's crazy. And it would just and like... What they were actually building was probably like echo chamber type shit where you had like your legion of chanting slaves... Almost like Odd World, where they would just be like, yur, 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 yur. and what they would do is they would get it re reverberating to a frequency where these rocks were barely making contact with each other, and it was just like one guy was shoving like a 15 ton stone. That's what I think happened, but there, I don't know that there's anything <laughs> to back this up. That's crazy. That's how dude. I like. If you imagine the pyramids being built that way by like one guy just like raising a staff and everyone going, commence yearing. <laughs> He's like, bro, hard, do it hard, chant harder. Bro, 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 bro. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Doesn't that make a lot of sense? That's insane. That's how, <laughs> it's like. Well, I understand why that's like unbelievable, you know. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. You know? There's no way. <laughs> but I do, I do think that that's how they did that shit. Yeah, manhands. That does sound like Stonehenge. But from what I'm understanding, Stonehenge is, I think it's from the same time as Gobekli Tepe, but kind of sucks dick compared to it. Like they thought Stonehenge was nasty, and then they found Gobekli Tepe, and they were like, Stonehenge is gay. They fucking were trying. They tried, <laughs> but they couldn't do it. Nice try. So maybe maybe that's what they did, but I mean, okay. Wouldn't you prefer to believe that's how they did the pyramids? Yes. And then there was just one guy that was like being extremely precise with all of it. Well, because didn't they say like the running theory now is like they would just like kind of like put logs down and roll them on logs, and then but then they that's like, from when I was a kid. But then they'd like kill slaves, and then like the like the blood would kind of like move it like a flood. Whoa! They would kind of like use people as like it, it like end logs is what they're saying, and it, the the blocks would like crush the people, and it would like they'd bleed obviously, and like the blood would kind of like be like a river, a lubricant, yeah, and it would slide it along. Well, that's pretty cool too. Maybe it's a combination of both. Probably, it, it's Rome wasn't built in a day. Go Black Go Black was not built in a day. That's true. <laughs> Uncle Stinger 69 said, I'm telling you, they would tie ropes to the moon and the moon would pull the stuff. <laughs> I like that too. Dude, so true. Solid mass is better at transferring force than sonic waves, I'm pretty sure. Well, I'm pretty sure you don't know the fucking first thing about it, so sure. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, if that's true, then no. Okay, Pharaoh ass. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> old Pharaoh ass fucking <laughs> slave me up ass. <laughs> fucking bitch. Fucking let my people go, ass. They would use mummies to push the blocks. That's pretty good. <laughs> Dude, they use the scorpion. Dude, a mummy game. workforce. Brendan Fraser was there. Brendan Fraser was there, getting Skinny. molested. Skinny friend Brendan Fraser getting molested <laughs> for the gods. That was the, they. Just, <laughs> they used Brendan Fraser's comb to build the pyramids. <laughs> that's, that's stronger than concrete. They were just milking Brendan Fraser to move fifty thousand ton stones, like the fat ladies in uh, Mad Max Fury Road. <laughs> yep.
Exactly. <laughs> that was such a good movie. <laughs> yeah, they called it Brendan's Milk. <laughs> and he would just sling a glass of it while everyone else was thirsting to death in the, in the fucking <laughs> desert. He said, ooh. Oh. Brendan, Brendan's milk. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, Brendan Fraser. Come. <laughs> um, actually, it's Fraser. <laughs> We're having fun. Ooh, this. <laughs> the Sphinx is actually the first mech. Now that's a good one. True. Have you seen um that uh there's. Oh shit! I don't know if that's actually Egypt. Anyway, massive, massive oceans that are no longer there, and uh, it, it, I, I can't even, I can't even regurgitate Aren't that. Aren't like most valleys like ancient, like ocean floors? Yeah, like like uh, like water erosion. Yeah. On a massive scale, like it looks like gigantic hills, mm. but when you zoom out far enough, it looks like ripples on the sand at the beach, and you go, oh, okay, an ocean flowed through here very abruptly. Yeah. But. I don't. I haven't watched enough YouTube videos about that yet. Do you get into like glacial shit? Do you fuck with the glaciers? Honestly, dude, I have a hard time getting into glaciers just because it's like you see all those videos of them like cracking and parts falling off. It's like I, that shit's not gonna be around that much longer. I'm mm -hmm. not gonna bother. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna be bother getting into that shit. But I think that it's like the idea with that is like it all used to be that, and that's like what's left. For a while it was, And right? that's what, like, shit, like shaped things, you know? Like, that's what shaped the landscape. What, giant, giant glaciers yeah. just, like, cracking Moving through? Moving and stuff, yeah. That's what, like, that, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Hot take, it could be argued that the Grand Canyon was just, like, oh, glacier, yeah. and then fucking, it started splitting. Whatever the Grand Canyon was actually doing in the beginning was probably nasty. Yeah. What was it water was flowing yeah through. yeah that's pretty cool the colorado yeah but now was that like an earthquake and it cracked apart or was that just so much water was i think going it's through? so much water for so much Ooh, time Ooh, now that i can get into because you look because you look at the bot there's a river yeah true you know yeah true okay i'll give you that yeah yeah damn yeah but anyway glaciers suck <laughs> I don't really like glaciers. And that, everyone's always bitching about them melting. It's like, dude, what do you want me to do about a glacier? You truly can't do anything about it. You can't even see almost all of it. True. You're seeing a tiny bit of it, and you want me to, first of all, give a shit about it, and second of all, what, am I not recycling enough for glaciers? Literally. Suck my fucking dick, dude. <laughs> Turn the if fucking I was, arrow. If man. I was standing on a glacier, and you took a picture of just the top of it, you wouldn't even be able to see me in the picture. True. Suck, why don't glaciers do some shit for me, and then maybe we'll see what's up. Just refreeze. <laughs> yeah. Get colder, bitch. What have you done for me lately? This is the new Joe Rogan. Yeah, Joe Rogan. <laughs> this is too hot for Rogan. True. He would never listen to this. <laughs> okay, I guess maybe, you know what we could do? Is we could build a scale model pyramid mm. and only manipulate the um, materials using sound. I'd love to do that. What we'll do is we'll use the orange half stack. Yes. And we'll try to get... If we can get like a stone just like doing a little bit of that and then... And just give it a push. Just a little bit of a, a little push. push. A little bit of a push. Then I think we could start getting grant money and scale it up. True. We got to get the bros on this. We can crowdsource this for yes. sure. Come to Tim's house. Let's, yeah. let's go move things. Yeah. <laughs> let's build a tiny pyramid with guitar sounds. <laughs> <clears throat> Why do you think we never found a huge civilization when we discovered America? Nobody could live there until just like 12,000 years ago or some shit. Right. Well, that was. I think it was the Ice Age right before that. Yeah, and that's what, that's when people started coming. Well, uh, so during the Ice Age, people were traveling all around the world. Yeah, they were using ice as land bridges. There's a new theory about. There's a new theory about how the how like Asians made it to North America. Hit me. There. So the land bridge. Old news. What it actually was is called the Seaweed Highway, and it was so like around like. Same like trajectory. You're telling like, me like, Chinatown was the first part of every city. <laughs> we built cities around all the Chinatowns that were already here. Like kind of in a way, because they would. <laughs> it was so lush around like the Aleutian Islands at the time. Like where's where, that? Where like the land bridge would be like up in Alaska. Oh, okay. What the little chain of islands that collect connects Alaska to Russia. Okay. That's like the Aleutian Islands. It was since the climate was different. That at that point, it was much more lush and there was a lot of like sea life like around that area so you could eat yes so the theory is that they made boats then they had like kind of like smaller boats and they would go in like family units and they would just kind of just like be like sailing along this coastline and be like fishing and like eating like sea life to survive instead of like walking i mean that tracks with asian people yeah 
They loved that shit. So we, they didn't even need the land bridge. They they were just like, yeah, they were using it as kind of like a, like a guide. God, yeah. Sure. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, that's plausible. In like, my determination, plausible. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get our best guys on this. You know, what would be really disappointing yeah. is if the pyramids were built because there there was just a gigantic water source nearby and they could just float everything to where they wanted. What if that was entirely submerged underwater at one point and that was how they built it? It's like it might like it's sand, dude. Yeah. Where's the beach? Yeah, it's where's, all beach. Where's sand under the water? <laughs> dude. Damn. I don't mean to be too real. Here. Checkmate, academia. <laughs> yeah, ever think about that, dumb bitches? Yeah, for real. You're so smart that you can't see something that simple. It's right in front of you. Did you guys know there were giants on Catalina Island? Ooh. Where the mm. wine mixer is? <laughs> well, let's dive in. <laughs> Catalina Island? Island. Is that like how there's like uh, horses on Assateague? Assateague, North Carolina? Virginia, no. Virginia, I'm oh, sorry. Giant. Were giant's bones found on Santa Catalina Island? And this is on Siv New site. San Fernando Valley News. Okay. Uh, over a span of 13,000 years, the islands have continued to reveal a vast and sometimes mysterious past. Ooh, I love mysterious mm -hmm. pasts. A self-taught archaeologist who moved to Catalina Island with his parents as a boy uncovered ancient burial sites in the early part of the 20th century. So they're trying to discredit him. Actually, that's a slight dig. It is self-taught. When you see, like, he's either an archaeologist or he's not. Don't throw the fucking self-taught in there. No lessons. With regard to the quote-unquote giants of Santa Catalina Island, Johnson wrote, these reports are apocryphal. Again, apocryphal is a word that you throw in when you're trying to discredit people. As far as I've been able to determine. For example, there's a historic photo of them. Oh, so these are... Oh, look. I mean... I think that... Is that a giant or just a kind of a big guy? It seems like a big guy, and I think that that... Uh, the argument for that, they're trying to fucking poo-poo him. And I, I think it could just been like an isolated society where they grew big. Yeah, these are just this is just big boy these island. These are big boys, like Scandinavia. Scandinavia, They're Africa has super super tall guys. Yes, dude. This you ever see those videos of the African dudes fucking like hunting by just chasing da animals down till they fucking die? Oh yeah, dude, they're crazy. Yeah, those and, guys are nuts. And they just run after them till they like, die of exhaustion. They exhaust animals. They, they just, run for hours. They run for days. It's insane. It's insane. That's the coolest shit ever. This is a giant beach town. Now, this looks like a normal town, but if actually you were to be standing there, you would be tiny. That's a million feet tall. This, is a <laughs> <laughs> this house right here is actually a million feet tall. They don't know how they built it. <laughs> sound waves. They, <laughs> they built a resort town using nothing but sound waves, it's and it's a million feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> it's all coming together. This, this is forbidden knowledge. This is what the scientists don't want you to hear. <laughs> yeah, we should break into the Smithsonian. I'd love to. The Academy of Natural Sciences, they mm -hmm. definitely got some weird shit. Mm -hmm. God damn. This is the best. <laughs> We're the <laughs> smartest people ever. <laughs> <laughs> How come nobody's listening to us? Do ancient knowledge and Down's voice? Absolutely not, dude. I would never. I would never. Come on, man. You can get me disbarred or whatever. Decredit. You can, I have. Dude, you're going to break my tenure. We're scientists, journalists. Yeah. And you can't handle that. Self-taught. Self-taught. Scientists. Self-taught archaeologists. Jur archaeo journalists. Dude, I'd l <laughs> That's like anal rapist. <laughs> <laughs> We're self-taught anal rapists. <laughs> and this is apocryphal, obviously. Damn. It's yeah. apocryphal to think otherwise, dude. And what do you do? Like, I guess, I guess in like archaeology movies, they're always trying to like, they're going to pull the funding and you're like, I'm so close to the... Yeah. And it's like, so, why don't you give these guys a chance? Why are you pulling all this damn funding? Why don't they give us a chance? Uh, yeah, I mean, What if we did some self-taught archaeology? I think that it wouldn't hurt anything. Now, who would sponsor this? We'd need a crackpot millionaire who, who's relying on us so he could open a theme park for giant men. Fucking, he what's his name? McAfee. John McAfee, dude. Wherever he went. Dude, he's alive. He's alive. I know he's alive, but he's how do alive? we track him down? It's we gotta like, tell him we're trying to build a million foot tall amusement park. He'll find us, yeah. Yeah, alright. Yeah, we, we need to will it like the, like the white girls on TikTok. 
I'm the luckiest man alive and everything we works need, out oh, yeah. for me. <laughs> We're going to manifest a million foot tall theme park. <laughs> I run a million foot tall theme park for ancient giants. I built it with sound waves. <laughs> and also sound wave the Decepticon is there. John McAfee, are you listening? John McAfee. John McAfee, you're our only hope. <laughs> 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 There's a message in this retarded guy. <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> They're putting chips, like putting cheese into my mouth. <laughs> Help me, John McAfee. You're my only hope. I gotta get these. I gotta get these retarded guys to John McAfee. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, this is too real. You'll get your money. And more. <laughs> just think when we find these giant bones, when we find these giant bones at million and <laughs> million just... foot hotels. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, there's something very alluring about the phrase million foot hotel. <laughs> million foot hotel. Is there anything that's a million feet tall? Like the sun, probably. What's a million feet in I don't know, miles? Yeah. A million feet in miles. That's 189, 189 miles. miles. So that's planes, just like a little bit of the Daytona 500. Yeah, planes go 40,000 feet cruising yeah. altitude. Oh no, I'm thinking miles. They don't go 40,000 miles in the sky, no, do they? No, no, 40,000 feet. feet. <laughs> okay. And so that's like what? That's like 20 miles in the air, though. No. 40,000 feet. Yeah. 5,000 miles. Oh no, eight miles. Eight miles. Eight, eight miles. miles high. So it's definitely less than 190 miles. So How are we missing this hotel? There's it's nothing. so damn big. <laughs> it's, it's 190 <laughs> miles tall. <laughs> How big is the sun? How tall is the sun? How tall is the sun? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, the sun. Oh, the sun's so fucking big. 864,400 miles across. Who knew it was so big? That seems too big, to be honest. I put the sun in the same realm as glaciers, to be honest. How do you know how big the fucking sun <laughs> is, dude? Well, if you, if you, met, if you, if you take a satellite photo of it from two different angles, yeah, and then do a third thing, yeah, then you'll get the size of it. <laughs> but it's like, <laughs> it's in space, dude. It's in space, the biggest thing in the world, but also the smallest thing in the world, and it's like, how, like. How are you supposed to figure out? It's just a ball in the sky, and you're kind of like, yeah, I can figure out how big that. It's not like it's like, oh, like I'm standing here and the tree is there. What's like the hypotenuse? You know? I think it is though. But is it that simple? It's all triangulation. <sighs> Which I'm I'm not a hundred percent certain what triangulation means, but I know that if you do two things, and then there's a third thing, and I think that might be like patented. That's like a trademark. <laughs> the third step in triangulation is a trade secret. It's a trade secret. But someone knows how to do it. But what I'm saying is, what if that's all bullshit is what I'm saying? How can the sun be that big? <laughs> I guess it warms everything. It's 109 times the diameter of the Earth. So it's 109 Earths across. It's like, isn't that, isn't that, doesn't that suck? It would take forever to get anywhere on the sun. Yes, dude. It would take forever to get to the sun. True. It would take literally... I guess, Lifetimes. I don't know. I have, no, I have no idea how far away it is. That's what I'm saying. I think it's all fake, dude. <laughs> I think it's all fake. How I'm far is the sun? 94 million or 91 million miles away. Like, these are fake numbers. Like, you can just say <laughs> anything. That's a million foot hotel. Like, it's the same thing. You're just saying things. <laughs> Yeah, that does suck. Damn, you really just platformed me. That sucks, dude. You yeah. platformed my radicalism. <laughs> Fuck the sun it's is over fake, for dude. Me. We're never getting the grant money now. Jupiter? Is that how big it is or how far it is? I'm gonna say how far it is. The yeah. distance of Jupiter from Earth is 5.331953 astronomical units. Light takes 44 minutes and 20 seconds. So it's 44 it's light minutes away. That's insane. I guess so, I don't know. Because it's like you is can't it? even go at light speed. That's like, true it's that 44 times like that's what i'm saying like at a point like it's all speculation and you can just kind of make it up yeah the i think these dorks are too deep in the weeds on this yes we're too deep in none it right of, now none of, yeah this is as far as you should go with this shit none of this is ever going to be real that you can't do anything you're never going to be able to program this into a ship 
and have the ship go entering Jupiter airspace. Yeah. Or maybe you will. It's like, but that's like, you have to travel at light Dude, speed, and I think that's impossible. It was 60 years between the Wright brothers and landing on the moon. <laughs> so you go, you go 60 years between invention of flight, landing on the moon. What? And we didn't even have fucking We haven't VR, done that dude. much shit. <laughs> we haven't done that much shit since the moon, have we? Like, no. We keep putting robots on Mars, but that's like, I could throw an RC car on the roof. And everyone's just kind of like, I okay. could put a camera on an RC car and roof it and then go, that's basically the same jumping. Putting a rover on Mars is just pacifying <laughs> dorks and that's it. It's just so they'd be like, we're actually working on it. Yeah, that's for high school robotics clubs and no one else. Literally. Moon landing talking down soon. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, I can't wait for fucking Stanley Kubrick to die <laughs> so we can find out what really happened, dude. My, my girlfriend went to the moon. <laughs> my girlfriend, who has big boobs, went to the moon. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> we landed a robot on a comet. That's fucking sick. Doubt. <laughs> X. Nah, actually. <laughs> We landed my girlfriend with big boobs on an asteroid. <laughs> <laughs> and she brought me back a rare soda. It's this ra is, ranch flavor. This is the most rare soda in the galaxy, <laughs> in the entire solar system. And my girlfriend with big boobs brought it back from an asteroid. <laughs> it's a Mexican coat. Where's my glasses? <laughs> my glasses were really sell down syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> Have you read the story slash saw the movie, short movie, uh, All Summer in a Day? No. It's depressing as fuck, dude. Tell me about it's like it. a short story and it's about, it's like post-apocalyptic, Earth is fucking dying. Everyone lives on Venus now. Everyone lives on Venus, it's chemical rain, the sun does not come out. Everyone has to sit inside all day and they have eat to use bugs. like, eat bugs. Eat like, eat like white like asparagus, cause that's all they can grow there. Oh, and then man. they're just kind of like, it, they're like they they can't go outside. They need to use like uh like like depression lamps to like get UV rays because it's so dark. Yeah. And it takes place in this school, like this elementary school. And there's this little girl who remembers being on Earth. All the kids in the school, they don't. They were born on, Venus. born on Venus. They've never seen the sun. This little girl was born on Earth. Remembers the sun. And all these kids are like resent the fuck out of her for oh, it. Oh, for sure. So then they like hate her. They're constantly bullying her. Then one day, there's one day they're at school. And it's the day like the sun comes out on Venus the first time in like decades. Oh, okay. So why why is that because it like of the rotation? Like you only get a day of sun yeah, every. Yeah, I oh, think God. so. God damn. Okay. And so otherwise it's just like gaseous rain and you can't go outside. And so the the day comes and everyone is still pissed at this girl because they're like, oh, what's the sun like? What's the sun like? But then there's you fucking bitch, there's, fucking there's, slut. There's haters, <laughs> haters, yeah. haters are like, bro, you did not see the sun. Shut the fuck up. And she was like, yes, I did. And then right when the sun was about to come out, they, they, the bullies take her and they fucking lock her in a closet so she can't see the sun. And everyone gets to go out and see the sun and then she doesn't and she's just locked in this closet. And then they come, the sun's only out for 20 minutes. Yeah. And then they come back in and they let her out and she never gets to see the sun ever again. I would kill them. It's depressing as fuck. That would be, that would start a murder spree. It's so sad. Wow, what a bummer. It's such a bummer. What did the bullies think of the sun? They thought it was sick. Because of Damn. course they did. You've never seen the sun before and then it's warm yeah. and light out. You know what would suck is like it comes out you're like, ah, that's it. Yeah. I kind of thought. For sure. kind of thought I was going to get like a tan. There was definitely a handful of kids that were kind of like, this is the shitty sun. Shitty about it, yeah. This is the sun. They were that kid at the I fucking lot of those, play I was I, at. I went to high school with a lot of those kids. They would rate the sun. They would see the sun 20 minutes one time in their entire life and they'd go, four out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> would not bask again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no. Yeah, I I think uh Oh fuck. There's a She's got to see it way more times, but that just means you miss it so much more. Yeah. For it sure. hurts so much more. Man. Damn dude. I don't want to go to another planet. Me I wanna neither. ride this one out. Me neither. I never understood that when people were like, I'm just gonna go to like Mars or whatever. It's like why the it's fuck like, would Mars you want to go sucks there? Fucking dick, dude. Why the fuck would you You think you're having a hard time getting pussy on Earth? <laughs> You're yeah. the only two people there, and you're wait, still not getting pussy. Wait until you're wearing a still suit. You know what I mean? You're wearing a still suit, and there's the the closest alcohol is 
24 years away. <laughs> and you're just with a bunch of other nerds. Yeah, you're yeah, oh, yeah. You're with science project people. You ever seen the people that like live in the Antarctic science stations? Yes, dude. The most autistic humans yeah. currently alive. Yeah, dude, because they're like, yeah, put them on fucking Antarctica. Put them around nobody else yeah. and tell them to take core samples. That's a fucking... That is a punishment. And then they see penguins and they're like, this is cool. Yeah, you get uh, you get hyped on penguins and you just never fuck. And then you see a leopard seal oh, just no. fucking maul it. They might nerd fuck. For sure. That's definitely so hot, dude. I don't know, <laughs> so man. Hot. So bony. So bony. Probably... As wet as it gets, though, dude. When two nerds fuck, that's gotta be just <laughs> in Antarctica. When two nerds fuck in Antarctica, that opens up a portal. Damn. That's Stargate. <laughs> <laughs> when two nerds fuck in Antarctica, like space Egyptians show up and yes. they go, "You rang." <laughs> <laughs> I heard, I heard uh, eyeglasses smacking together while the wettest, puss, wettest, hairiest <laughs> pussy in the world was just getting jackhammered by a gigantic weirdo boner. I, I, he's got like a laser scepter. He's just like, I'm ready. What do you guys need? <laughs> Lots of yeah. big dick weirdos. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we uh, we heard a girl with bad breath and dirty teeth fucking. <laughs> <laughs> They're holding a retainer. They're like, we found this in the snow. <laughs> That's a talisman. <laughs> They're spit dripping off Dude, of it. A, a, a retainer with cum on it is a talisman. <laughs> <laughs> the, the runes finally line up in the fucking... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hold it up to the sun and reflect. Golden spacemen come out. Dude. Oh, man. We gotta make this happen. Or is this happening? <laughs> That's what Antarctica is. This is Antarctica. That's like when they try to get, like, a rare panda to breed. <laughs> they send nerds to Antarctica to <laughs> fucking negative 400 degree temperatures. So we could summon aliens to enslave us. Do you think that the Nazis are in Antarctica? Do you think that's, like... Ooh. Like, frozen? No, like, they're just, like, they're there. Like they, they, they're they just chilling. Ship. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were saying like we cryogenically froze the Nazis in Antarctica. No, like they were like we're Audi, and we're here. And we're they're building. Well, they did have U-boat like... technology, so U-boats could go under the surface ice and yes. get you actually to the land mass in Antarctica. Antarctica. And they're also like they all went to Argentina. Argentina's so Pretty close. close. That would be a good checkpoint on the way to yeah. That's how you like get to Antarctica. You go to you go to like Argentina and you just yeah Tierra de, del Fuego. That must have sucked though. When they first got to Argentina, it's like damn, it's all minorities here. <laughs> <laughs> when the Nazis show up in Argentina, it's like fuck like, man, fuck. There's no pure bloods here. And now they're all white. Argentinians are all white now. Is that true? They're all pretty white. I I do want to go to Buenos Aires. That'd be sick. I would love to go to Uruguay. I think that would be sick. Yeah, Montevideo. I'd like to like I'd like to do a South American tour, dude. Yeah, just check out some shit. Yes, I guarantee the food's nasty. It's probably so good. Dude. If we just make a couple of videos, it's a tax write off. Yes, we make a couple of Patreon videos. Going to Argentina pays for itself. How expensive is it to visit Argentina? We can go hang out with the fucking gauchos. Yeah, um, Buenos Aires vacation, and then we'll throw in Uruguay as part of the package. Yes. It's right next Whoa, to it. Whoa, there's great artworks in there. Yeah, dude. It's it's like uh it's like the cultural center of fucking South America. It's a hot spot for music, food, the arts, and dancing. The city is one of the most diverse. Dude, I've been saying I desperately need a vacation. Here's a travel guide, budget travel guide. Here we go. Known as the Paris of South America. Wow. Lives, Lives up, up to, to its nickname, nickname, thanks to its popular cafe culture, grand boulevards, and the incredible food scene that rivals its European counterpart. Oh, dude. Take me back. <laughs> Take, Take me, me back. fucking back, dude. Visit the National History Museum, of course. Yeah. Meander. meander. I love to meander. Meander's the best, dude. For the best cultural and shopping. You know, shopping I can live without, but cultural. Yeah. Make your way to the Sunday Antiques Fair at Plaza Dorego. Artisans, musicians, oh, I thought this is shit walkers. Stilt walkers. <laughs> and other street performers line the streets. And you can buy souvenirs. As You can buy silver? Wow. Dude, it's sick. Tour the Casa Rosada. Wander the cemetery. Ooh. <laughs> Spooky. <laughs> Learn to tango. Ooh. 
take in a football game. I'd love to take in a football oh, game. Do you think Messi will be there? Oh, he's a gal he's a golden god. He'll never be seen in public there. True. He'd be swarmed. Uh, go to the Evita Museum. Oh yeah, I forgot Madonna. Circulo Militar. Yes. Oh man. There's look at this. There's like 20 things to do. All in one little city. Big All right, city travel probably. costs. Here's what we're talking about. Hotels start around 900 Rs for a large 10-person dorm room. That's a hostel, dude. Like a 10-person hostel. Like you and 10 of your boys or you're in there with 10 boys? I think it depends. If you go there with 10 boys, you get the room probably. Though dorms with six to eight beds are much more common, costing 1350 Now, what's an R's, into, uh, R's to dollars? Oh, it's One, five cents. Is it? One R is five cents. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, no, less than five cents. Whoa, a dollar is 183 yeah, Argentinian pesos. It's, a fifth, it's like a half a cent. So... Let's say 1800 is $9 Dude. a night for a dorm room. Dude. We're fucking morons for not going here. Yeah. That's for a hostel. Now let's look at hotels. 6300 for a double. I was like, what's that fucking 12 bucks? Although if it's just you and your bro, you go hostel. Yeah. This is going to be like $14, I think. $34. $34. Nothing. Most include breakfast. Now what kind of amenities are you getting in the hostel? In the hostel, well, like in hostels, free breakfast like, is not common, though a couple do offer it. Hostels in like Europe are just like you just chill. It's you just cook a spot. your own meals, an outdoor terrace or bar, and many offer free walking tours as well. Hot yeah. tub or pool? Damn, the pool hostel. All right, now let's look at let's look at the food prices. I mean, less than a thousand R's mm -hmm. <laughs> for a light lunch. What's an extravagant dinner? Argentine steakhouse, twenty seven hundred R's. Fine. I got it. Fine. I think I have twenty seven hundred dollars. Three a beer is around three hundred, while a glass of wine is two hundred. Okay. Cappuccino one seventy five Rs. That's less than a dollar. One seventy five Rs is a little less than a dollar. Empanadas are less than a hundred Rs. It's like. Ooh, backpacking budgets. Oh, come on, man. We're doing this. Learn to tango for free. Yeah, I guess you could just like go. Dude, if I if I came people. back with the ability to tango, that might save my marriage. <laughs> You're having a very different kind of dream. <laughs> <coughs> okay, okay. Money saving tips. Stay at a hostel. Use the free public bikes. Pack a water bottle. The tap water here is safe to drink. Preferred bottles of life. Straw. Stay with a local. That'd be crazy. What the hell? What kind of advice is that? They said just stay. Well, I guess they're saying use couch surfing, like the fucking app. Oh. Uh, eat at restaurants for lunch. Yeah, where else? So 500 to 700 dollars. So 700 dollars is. Three bucks. Three bucks, dude. We're going to live like kings. I gotta, do you have your passport? Yeah, dude, I have my passport on me. I gotta get my passport now. My passport is always on me. My passport expired. In case I need to fucking flee. You have to take it. You have to tip. Okay, you got to tip. That's fine. We're gonna live like kings here, dude. You have them twenty R's. Twenty R's. I got it on me right now. Okay. It's hottest in January. Ooh, okay, this is important. February. Because well, it's southern hemisphere. It's, yes. it's the summer now. Argentina is a safe place to backpack and travel, even if you're traveling solo, and even as a solo female traveler. Ladies. That said, while violent crime is rare, petty crime is very common. Don't flaunt jewelry or belongings and always keep your valuables secure and out of reach. Cell phone theft common. They'll snatch your phone out of your hand in broad daylight. Yo, try me, dude. Yeah, dude. Ar yeah, Argentina, it's on site. It's like, where do I live, dude? Take it. Yeah, yeah, for real. Where do I live? Beware the mustard scam while you're here. This is when someone on public transit points out a stain on your clothes and then tries to wash it out while someone else steals your wallet. Oh, dude, I want them to fucking try. Put mustard on me, watch what happens, dude, dude. They're getting sliced up. I will fight my way out of Argentina. Dude, John Wick out of Argentina. <laughs> I'm going to get to the airport with dudes just like trying to hold me back from getting on the plane. <laughs> All right. I think they're tall bros in Argentina. There's tall bros in Argentina? I think that they are tall bros. Ooh, look at these. That's crazy. Patagonia. Fuck, Is that's Patagonia right. Patagonia in Argentina? Yeah. 
Then I'll then I'll be the only guy I know allowed to wear a Patagonia. True. Everyone else, I'm gonna pull their patches off. <laughs> I'm gonna rip, I'm gonna give those, take those fucking colors fucking off, dude. Pussy. Yeah, we're good. We're set. We're going to Argentina. We're going to Argentina. We're shipping to, up to Argentina. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I think the passport is gonna cost more than the trip. Probably. All it right, seems flights. Like it costs we gotta look up flights. Fifteen fucking dollars. Flights to Argentina. Never mind. Doo doo fingers said that they're short in Argentina. <laughs> <laughs> Argentinians are a million feet tall. <laughs> Imagine how big the hotels are then, dude. All right, the flights are a little bit expensive. But when is that flight? Tomorrow? Today? Yeah. February 7th. Two stops, one stop. Sixteen-hour flight. Dude, I can only fly to Argentina. Direct. Oh, a thirteen hundred round trip. That's fine. Is that direct though? No, two no, stops. Two stops. What's CLT? Uh, the airport. Clit, Clit Town Airport. Damn, maybe I'll stay there. I don't know that they do direct. That true. It's probably far. It's far as fuck. It's another continent. True. Other departing flights. Ooh, twelve hundred dollars. Two no. stops. Two stops. That's a twenty-four hour flight. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> That's a day of your life gone. Oh, CLT is that Clinton Airport? Where's that? I think it's in like it's like, like fucking Washington, Virginia. No, it's in like it's in like New York. Mm. New York near like Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. What the hell? Dude, I don't care about these damn emissions. Get oh, me to dude, they, look, they show you your emissions. Oh, minus 13% emissions, and it costs more. Oh, I'm such a good person. Mm. Oh, look at me. I'm Ooh. paying 600 more dollars, mm. so they save 13% emissions. Oh, I reduced my emissions by paying more money. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, fucking bust. <laughs> the fog voice finally got me. <laughs> damn, at the end of that play, uh, Dante Alighieri's daughter comes in, He go and she goes... What's all this fog doing in this room? Yeah. Close the window. There was a bunch of dudes. No, don't the close room. the window on me. <laughs> she said. She said, "You dumb fucking idiots, close the window. I'm My dad is dying." <laughs> so this looks like the nastiest flight. Thirteen hours, easy. Let's go any. Let's what's what's the cheapest by any date? That one. That's the cheapest, and that is. Weird that there's no date on it. No. Maybe that's like a regular... Oh, I guess it's that. That's February 7th. I'm just saying like anytime ever. Yeah. Let's say let's say March is more realistic. Mm -hmm. For sure. Actually, to be quite frank, April might be the most realistic for me. Just because Mary Jo's going to Florida in March. Ooh. Yeah, she's going to the Jiu-Jitsu uh, IBJJF pans. That's sick. Yeah, I'm happy for her. Ooh, all right. Slightly cheaper. There's no direct flights. Uh -uh. Ooh. Stop in Lima, though. That's sick. Yeah. I'd do a layover in Lima. I'd, I'd want to do, I'd want to do actually like a stay. Mm -hmm. You stay in Peru a couple days, go back to the airport. Yeah, the move might be to just hop. Mm -hmm. Do they have like Amazon trains? Like a train through the Amazon? They must. That would be so sick. Trans Amazonian Railway, come on, fuck no on, way. let's go! It links the Atlantic and Pacific. Uh, fuck, it's not done. You fucking built. Oh, China's building it. That's creepy. Well, it's like, did you know China's secretly taking over Africa? China dude? owns Africa, dude. Dude, there, have you? There's a lot of videos of just like Chinese mine for like five foot tall Chinese mine bosses, like just hitting. Black giants with it's clipboards. Insane. It's insane. You gotta watch out, man. They're just letting them. They're do gonna it. get us, dude. They got us. God damn it. They got us. We can't take a train through the Amazon because China's fucking dragging their feet. That ticket to ride, sick game. <laughs> <laughs> they denounced. Oh, the and they don't like it. Okay, it's a bad, it's a bad train. That's fine then. If they don't, if they don't want it, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. They live in there. What about uh? So I also saw on Joe Rogan that the Amazon is actually man-made. Do you think? They're saying they're saying the Amazon. It's so and big. It's though. like yeah, but that's because it was densely populated and uh, cultivated by early humans. They it's were like, like, ooh, if I grow more of this stuff and eat it, things get I get fatter and I get bigger bitches. It's like they went hog wild, dude. It makes sense. 
and they accidentally created the biggest rainforest on the planet. That makes sense. I know. It makes perfect sense. That's crazy. Man, dude. And they chanted at the trees. And it, they moved. Well, they died. <laughs> they died. They, the conquistadors came and sneezed on them, and they all they all died yeah, pretty quickly. Dude. That's fucked. That's what they get for not building, like, shitty, like, semi-advanced towns where they were walking in their own feces every day and developing advanced immune systems. Yeah. Dude. Your fault. Your fault. Your fault that you were actually kind of like in touch with nature and burying your feces and not just like stepping in it in dirty boots with holes in them. Dude. Europe, I know everything. Dude, Europe sucks this. <laughs> oh, dude. Okay. The reason that we're even on this is so tomorrow <clears throat> uh, I've, I've successfully pulled my son out of school. Yeah. He'll never go to, I don't know, maybe he'll go to a real high school. Uh -huh. My son is no longer in school. Really? Yeah, so he's we found a uh, an online charter school where it's like kind of self led, and then he also has like uh, virtual classes. Now, mm -hmm. another girl in his class, that our family is kind of close with them. Their th their family made this change, mm -hmm. so their daughter's at home on a laptop with headphones, going, "This is way better than dealing with those kids at school." Yeah, but I just got all the materials in the mail this week, so I got his new his history textbook. Mm -hmm. It's like prehistory to. Uh, I don't know, early man or something like mm. that. So I, th I think I might Billy Madison. <laughs> I <laughs> think I'm going to Billy dude. Madison, and because I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to like work through all this stuff with him as like his tutor. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in Billy Madison school right now. That's I get so to go sick. back to seventh grade That's and actually so learn sick. stuff. But and you're just gonna get into it. Well, I didn't like it. I, I. I pulled up a random page and it was like India and China were some of the earliest civilizations at around 3000 BC and I'm like this is fucked up this is not real That's maybe fake. I misread it it maybe. could be like 30,000 BC uh, yeah maybe maybe I, I was just glancing through it. they sent us so much dude for uh, for his literature class mm -hmm. they sent uh, Julius Caesar and the Hobbit damn I'm, I'm pumped that's sick in, in their old school, they were just reading stories about, like, kids being the victims of racism. <laughs> That's all they read. That's crazy. That and, like, black erotica. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure the only books that they read in school. And now he's going to get to read actual literature. That's so sick. He's, and he was like, I, I was like, yo, dude, they mailed you a copy of The Hobbit. And he goes, eh, is that good? I was like, it's the fucking It's, like, one of best. the best books ever. It's the best, dude. Welcome to giving a shit about information. That's so sick. Yeah. That's so sick. And yeah. He's going to be here to see it. He's going to come um, intern at Good Boy Studios, too. Fuck yeah. So Tuesday's his first day. Hell yeah. I'm bringing him to dad meet on Tuesday. Hell yeah. Um, not sure about... Not sure about going to uh, Stoner Dad's, but we'll see. Stoner Dad's pretty wild. Yeah. That's just my <laughs> little opinion. LOL. i will be trying to make Timmy listen, but barely reads my shit, but it's cool. I'm here for the entertainment. No, I'm, I'm totally with you. I am, I am trying to... It's... I wouldn't say I'm not saying it's tough with a guest. It's just I'm so engaged in in conversation with you here. It's it's hard to. But just so you guys know, we are absorbing the chat. It is influencing our our chat. So I'm sorry if I'm not calling you guys out by name like I typically do. Yeah, Everything Aesop does is really dope. Yeah, dude. Like Aesop. fables. Yeah, Aesop is the goat. Mm -hmm. Oh no, the music. <laughs> no. <laughs> My bad. Well, yeah. Anyone, all the Aesops are great. Yeah, shout out Aesop. Mm -hmm. Slow and steady wins the race. Isn't that him? Tortoise in the hair? So you're talking about the greatest wisdom ever concocted? Yes. Yes. That's Aesop. That's Aesop? <laughs> <laughs> you ever fuck with Herodotus? Uh, I know the name. He's like the Greek historian. Yeah. He was like exiled from Athens, so he was like, fuck, I guess I'm just going to like walk around and write down what's going on. It sucks when you're the best, everyone hates your guts. They hate you. Exile is your only option. As soon as you're like, I'm on the new shit, yeah. everyone's just like, get the they fuck say, get away from here. us, dude. And then you have to survive on people being yeah. like, yo, you're actually sick. I'm trying to carry buckets on my head and eat stale bread in a crowded marketplace. Get the fuck away from <laughs> me. I don't want knowledge, dude. Knowledge sucks. <laughs> Go away. Go starve to death. Literally. Yeah, it's crazy. People, hot take. People are fucking morons. Yeah. <laughs> that well, they prefer to be morons. I think people typically have the capacity for greatness. It's like, and yeah, dude, humans. It's like that's yeah. 
They don't want the discomfort. Look where we are, dude. They don't like soft exile. Do you Th think that a fucking squirrel is living like we are right now? Like that's I know for a fact they're not. That's crazy. I know for a fact. And we're here, and then you're choosing to be fucking brain dead. And it's like, think about your ancestors, dude. They'd be fucking- they're rolling in their graves right now. But they didn't realize till it was too late. They reached the old age of 35 years old, and they go, Ooh, I wish I'd spent my life different. <laughs> I'm dying with dirty hands. No! Yeah. But also, they were probably like, this is chill. Because they're- because they- they were so much more like- naturally in tune because well, you know, they're seeing like the world around them and they're like damn we got it pretty sweet tr how far back are these ancestors though dude I, it's like peasant times historians will tell you three thousand years yeah okay that's what i'm talking about i'm saying how far back are we going? are we are we talking about peasants just shoveling straw all day for like a feudal lord or are we talking about people sitting around a campfire with clay huts? I think the clay huts. Okay, that's where I like to think yes. about. I don't like to think about peasants. No. Well, because they, they got I tricked. I can't identify them they got they got dumb as fuck, and then they got tricked. And they just got stuck right. into being tricked for a thousand years. Yeah, with peasants, it was like, what if shit was a little bit easier all the time, mm -hmm. but your life, you were kind of human cattle? Yeah. And yeah. people were like, I could wear a gray sack Dude, as clothes. It's happening now. Dude. We're getting too spicy. It's yes. like, we're peasants, bro. People are begging to be peasants. That's all they want. It's insane. The natural inclination for modern man is peasantry. It's insane. But the thing is, when you die, everyone experiences the same... I'm calling it, for lack of a better phrase, a DMT trip. Yes. When you die, even if you think, I've lived a good life, I was a good boy, no one in my family has been disgraced, I, I had provisions for everyone, it's time for me to leave this world... And then you lay back and close your eyes and it's the universe is revealed to you. You go, oh no, dude, what the fuck? I was kind of just waiting for new TV shows to come out the whole time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, dude. That's the real hell. The real hell is when the universe is revealed to you as your eyes close for the final time. And it's it's like, spoiler alert, you actually did it wrong. Yeah. You go, no! Everybody's last words are, what the fuck? What the fuck? No! And then dead. Yeah. And then you're just dead. I actively avoided thinking about anything because, you know, my family had some, like, dark secrets that made me uncomfortable and I just kind of wanted to, like, buy Funko Pops. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's like... <laughs> it's it's too real. Uh, like, that's too real. I know, it sucks, dude. It's so unfortunate. All you have to do is play video games and listen to podcasts and you'll be better off than most people. Yes, because you're just kind of like, yeah, this is it. Yeah, you're putting new wrinkles in your brain. You're like, this is it. Yeah. Instead of fucking, I don't know, fucking plant a damn tree. Go to Argentina. Go to Argentina. Become a gaucho. Peasants had a good time. Sometimes they would just dance until they all died. Sounds great. That's actually not bad. It's because they would get drunk as fuck because their <laughs> lives were miserable. And then they would just spin around and get dizzy and they'd be like, whoa. Oh, then you reincarnate with Down syndrome. I like that theory. That'd be sick. When you, when you. That's bliss. That's pure bliss. When your inheritance is all Funko Pops, you instantly wake up with gigantic glasses on <laughs> like quantum and your leap. tongue sticking out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm retarded. Yeah, when you when you die and you just look over at your shelf and it's just walking dead Funko Pops, you go... <sighs> you shoot awake and you're being delivered from a woman who was like, I'm going to love him anyway. <laughs> And just a dad that's just like, I seriously, this is going to be the hardest. I have the hardest life ever now. I wish we would have aborted him. Uh, and that's just you. You're just like, what the fuck? Your you brain finishes rebooting and it's just you have Down syndrome. And then necessary, you typically Down syndrome people are, you you leap forward yeah. in the next go around. I yeah, think. You I become, think so. You're like sure. a senator's son or something. I would really like to believe in like reincarnation, but I don't think it's a thing. I believe in the karmic wheel. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you have multiple attempts, but I think I think that you could be. If you're seriously bad, you you get stuck to the karmic wheel, yeah. and you have a hard time escaping. And I think all you know, there's no there's no ideal, but you have to strive toward like the next step, and eventually you escape the karmic wheel, and then maybe maybe at that point you're playing the real game. I think we're kind of at the start menu yeah. in your human world. That's very that's very like opposite of Buddhism though. Because uh, Buddhism is like you're a human. That's the peak. Really? Human is peak. I think. I think the the human the human form is so flawed that if there is a second level to any of this, humans are kind of like grubs. Humans yeah. are celestial grubs. 
I don't know. In maybe the grand we'll, scheme, I might be a reverse Buddhist. In the grand scheme, I think absolutely. Yeah, yeah. If you're talking about co on a cosmic level, there's no way human is as good as it gets. No, absolutely not. It's like, bro, aliens have been here. Have we been anywhere? You gotta, you gotta imagine if the human brain has a consciousness and like a self that you can't explain. Like they don't know what parts of your brain to cut out to like transplant your mm -hmm. your mind, right? Yeah. There has to be connections of elements in the infinite vastness of space that are a loose consciousness. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, absolutely. I mean, duh. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's like preaching to the choir, dude. Yeah, so that's what you're trying to be. You're trying to be a gas cloud that occupies a space in, like, the Milky Way. You are trying to be a galaxy. Every day. Yes. Every day. Yes. I'm striving to be a galaxy. Yes, and I think that's how we should all act. <sighs> No, it'd just be saying stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm pretty sure we're both just saying stuff. <laughs> it's like, this is so real. It's like, you're uh, uh, sorry. You're, why don't you crank that frequency up a little bit, brother? <laughs> yeah. well, you're, you're thinking, you're thinking like this. <laughs> we're thinking like this. We're galaxy brain. Yeah. You're, you're Vince McMahon getting his dick sucked in the ring. We're magnets. <laughs> we're G-pilled. We're, yeah. <laughs> we're G-pilled. We're galaxy-pilled. <laughs> Man, this is the fucking best. Dude, this is sick. I'm so glad you made it over here today. Dude, me too. I'm having such a fun time. What else did I have to I, I So I told you about my dream about getting divorced. Mm. I can't remember if that was... I, I feel like I had so much I wanted to get out, and we've just been... We've just been crushed by, <laughs> by thoughts this entire time. We're peasants, dude. What, all right, what, all right. Let's leave it up to the chat. What, what, what do we go down next? Before we, we have time for one more segment. It's a viewer choice. My shirt is majestic. I got this shirt at Shady Maple in the gift shop. It was free. It was free for my birthday. Shady Maple. Damn. We need to. Um, do you guys know about Shady Maple? Does the chat know about Shady Maple? Yeah, we're taking them there for dad meet Dude. in February. I think the Monday morning after the Super Bowl yes. because we we have to do it on a weekday morning. There is a. And the day after the Super Bowl, I think a lot of people can make accommodations. There's a horse auction in uh, New Holland, Pennsylvania, on Monday mornings, right by Shady Maple. It's kind of a hot spot. It's the shit. All right, so we get to breakfast before the horse auction people and then go to the horse auction. Yes. Okay, yeah. I'll yes. let you know. It's the shit. Oh, no, they need to get you a chair on Stoner Dads. No more floor. <laughs> I don't want to fuck with the formula too much, though. No, I like. I, I was I, I was standing a lot this week. Well, they're not going to be able to see you. My face. I'm the sun. Dude, I'm the sun. You became the galaxy. Dude. <laughs> it's full circle. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to... I'm, I'm trying not to hype it up too much, but I think this next episode of Stoner Dads, we finally got it in gear. It's so... <laughs> I, think it, I think it all finally clicked together, it's or it so might be the worst thing ever made. I don't know. I think it was so good. When, when we finished recording Stoner Dads, that's coming out, I guess, tomorrow or Tuesday, Matt took off his headphones and said the phrase, symphony of retardation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's again, it was. And that's exactly what it was. It was so good. People I made a, aren't ready for it. I made a point to orbit around or behind everyone during the show. It's, it's, <laughs> it's so good. It, there's nothing like it. It's so good. It's not out yet. No, it's not. This is the one that's not out yet. No. It's coming out tomorrow or Tuesday. Last episode was great. Episode before that, also great. This next one, it feels like something finally clicked into place. We finally settled into the new setup. It was so good. <laughs> I love how all the recommendations recommendations for segments are different Down syndrome jokes. Yeah, I forgot that we even asked for a new segment. Sorry. <laughs> There's nothing funny about it. No more floor, dude. I love the floor. I live on the floor, dude. Yeah, we need someone holding down the floor. I'm I'm all around. Also, I'm all encompassing. Also, Jake broke the fourth chair. Really? You know Jake Patera broke the fourth chair in the studio? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to make fun of it, but... <laughs> I mean that guy. He's big. He's a big boy. He he's as he's as funny as he is big, and he's very funny. He's a hoss. And he smashed a chair. <laughs> <laughs> he became the sun. <laughs> he's he crushed a chair. He became a black hole and oh. put too much pressure on it. <laughs> he really said how. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he, he he put some he put some torque on that thing and completely smashed it. That's so sick. <laughs> Damn, imagine if he and Curtis was still alive. 
I think you'd be. I think it'd be sad and depressing at this point. Absolutely, he'd be. You remember when Lou Reed did that Metallica album? And you're like, Dan, you should have died young. <laughs> he died in the sweet spot. He died when he was king. Yeah, that's, what, that's it. Is when you want to go out. That's why I'm afraid of uh, any kind of modicum of success because mm -hmm. then it'll be like I better die. Yeah, but also. From the outside looking in, it's kind of like, damn, should have died. But I think when you're in it, you're kind of like, man, I did this cool shit. Would well, you ever, um, I've, I've, I've watched a couple of, like, okay, I watched uh, Bob Dylan talking about how, like, he made, you know, for some people, like, the best shit ever. He fell off. Let's, let's, let's call it the best shit ever. I kind of don't care about Bob Dylan. Mm. But Bob Dylan made the best shit ever. And then uh, I guess he lost his voice. He said he lost his voice. I think he means creatively. Yeah. Because it's like he's not even singing. He's just going. Dude, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, recently, his live he doesn't sing. He just makes noises. Yeah. He's just guttural. But it's I think he like I think success takes away whatever it is that makes you successful. Yeah. Success removes, or maybe like you keep trying to chase the thing that made you successful. And Bob Dylan talks about it, he's like, yeah, I made I made legendary shit, and then I couldn't anymore. Mm -hmm. And I I think he was kind of I don't know if he was being defeatist or if he was talking almost like in a more philosophical sense, like you can't keep making it. But then I was I was watching a Jeff Magnum or I was reading a Jeff Magnum interview, mm -hmm. and he was talking about making like in the aeroplane over the sea, and he's like, there's a there's like. You you make you the best shit ever, and then that time is over, and you can't ever do that again, and you can't go back to it. Yeah, I think he said you can't go back to it, and I'm I don't know what that means though. I think does that mean like there's a period in your life where you can make the best shit ever, and then that period that door that door closes forever, and can you miss it? Can you just not make absolutely. that shit? I think absolutely you can miss it. Well, that's terrifying. Yeah, but I think I I think. It's possible to reopen that door, but it's got to be. They're saying it's impossible to reopen that door. They don't have. Bro. Maybe it, maybe it's it. because they made the shit. Yeah. Like, is that stuff inside of you, and you need to get it out, and then it's gone, or is it like during a certain like the 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 stars align in your brain, you make the best shit ever, and then it's like, okay, I got that all out. It's time to move on to less good stuff. I don't know. I think I, I think for a lot of people, yes. I think that it's like you kind of have like a time and place, but I think that there's definitely ways to like. It's all like experiential. I feel there could be you could have like a momentous thing happen to you where you're just like, you're back into it. You know. I hope so. I hope so. I think so. I hope so. For for me personally, being almost forty years old, I go well. If there is a window, mine is shut. No, there's no way forty year old dudes are going like. I've got it. Bro, Dangerfield. Oh, true. Dangerfield. He did it, and then he said, fuck this, I'm going to sell siding. I'm going to sell aluminum siding, and then he came back in at like 45, and then ripped it, and then became beloved. Yeah, good point. You know? Yeah. I think that it, you have, there are definitely times where it opens and closes, but I think you just kind of like, I think it's constantly opening and closing, and you just need to find that. You have to recognize when it's open? Yes. This is very much not thinking that it closes forever is very much peasant mentality. Ooh. You're never going to catch a king being like, actually, this is going to be Yeah, I did now. all my best kinging when yeah. I was... Well, actually, uh, the Northman, that guy tries to die. The king in the beginning is like, it's time for me to die in battle. Mm. Like, I've done my shit. I have an heir. It's time for me to die in battle. So, like... Like Lieutenant Dan. Yes. Well, he was also crippled, and I would kill myself, too. Mm. But, it, well, no, he was crippled. Say that, but. but he was crippled because of... He was supposed to die. Remember, he was like, his whole thing was he was supposed to die in war, and then Forrest saved him, and he became crippled. Yeah. Yeah, but then is that just a coping mechanism for being crippled? I, I don't know. No, because when he was dying, when he was laying on the floor of the jungle, he was like, let me die. All of my family died in battle. Let me die. Yeah. And then he said, nah, I got uh, yeah, it. What a fucking idiot, dude. Dude, fuck him. Fuck Forrest Gump. Dude. Yeah, for real. Dude, you crucified Lieutenant Dan on the karmic wheel. Dude, <laughs> true. So you could feel good? True. What, so you can go, you can go shrimp fishing with your boy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point. Dude. Staying relevant in pop culture for 60 plus years is pretty wild. Yeah, I mean, I guess, like, if you create that timeless thing, you've got, you've, you're in forever. Yeah. And the Rolling I, Stones are... They've overstayed their welcome. They've overstayed their welcome, but they're still going and they're playing the hits. Yeah, but is that good or is that a curse? I think that's... Eh. 
Are, I think like, that there's there's yin and yang and everything. Being being seventy five years old and playing the shit that you used to get pussy when you were twenty three. But like, Bob Weir is doing that though, and Bob Weir's cool as ever. Yeah, so was, I mean, my favorite band's Quicksand, and I think, well, I don't know, I don't know that it's recognized that they're still nasty, but like they were like nineties, mm-hmm. like Walter Schreifels is nineties hardcore legend, mm-hmm. and now he's making like very trippy post hardcore and I think it's like it's he's moved on from what he did that made it great and yeah. now he's making something different that's to me better but like I don't know that's not a glory hound guy that's a guy that's he's very much in touch with the karmic wheel I think that's what you have to do I feel I feel like yeah like Jeff Mangum Bob Dylan and they're like oh man I can't like it, that's it for me it's like because you keep trying to do the same shit and yeah. everyone's like this is played yeah they're just played good point I, I, dude, this is great perspective. I love this shit. Yeah, dude. Damn. They're just played. Wow. I didn't know you were going to honestly drop this much wisdom on them. <laughs> I told you platform Essentially me, dude. for free. I know. <laughs> Add on 88, by the way. 31 minutes, 39 minutes ago. God damn it. I missed your Prime Dom description. I damn. appreciate you if you're still here. And Jick26 with a Prime Dom description. And Kool-Aid gave us... Dude, dude two hours ago, Kool-Aid hit us with his 50th. That's crazy, Dom description. dude been a long time hell yeah dude. kool-aid's an irl og at this point that's sick yeah that's sick yeah damn wow what were we actually what were we actually supposed to be talking about i don't know <laughs> i told them we we're gonna open the floor to them and i think we've just been ignoring every tim is writer's block real for someone like yourself oh okay um no no because i don't think that I actually have any kind of output that relies on like inspiration I think I think the way that I, and I don't want to pull back the curtain too much here and uh, I might be kind of useless but I think I'm my utility as a let's say lowercase e entertainer is almost like um let me see like a like a, a like a, a life straw for retardation like you can you can dip me into any source of uh, information and you know what like you're gonna get clean you're gonna get clean water out of it you know what I mean for like sure. like uh, you know you I don't know I have I wouldn't say it's predictable but like I have a, a familiar flavor that you can you can like push you're any kind press. Of, you can push any experience through this filter and on the other side you're going to get like you know what I mean I'm like I'm your favorite play-doh die not your favorite <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an enjoyable play-doh die that you're gonna push through like oh I got star-shaped play-doh that I could pretend is spaghetti yeah I'm the, I'm, a, I'm the star-shaped play-doh press die and uh, you know maybe I'll never I'm never gonna create anything timeless but like it's like and you don't even know that though I don't care yeah but I, I think I have... Uh, I, I think that's kind of the move. That yeah. Not caring about it and just doing things that you enjoy is how it becomes timeless. But you never have to stop having fun. Yeah. You can have a good time forever. And yeah. I feel like that's the... To, all right, okay. I think the greatest challenge people face right now is having a good time. I agree. And I think that I want to be a leader in having a good time. That's all... That's my only genuine interest is just reducing misery for normal people. Mm-hmm. Like myself. Yeah. I Dude, I make retarded podcast for the american working man because that's who i am and that's who i care about yeah so no no point no point in in thinking you're going to create a great work but like dude if you consistently illustrate how simple it is to have a good time i think you can eventually just like just by sheer volume i'll i'll leave an impact on people i mean absolutely we'll see what's up though i think so i'll I'll check in with you guys from argentina in march (laughs) (laughs) How many people who created something timeless were deliberately trying to create something timeless, though? Uh, I don't know, man. I think, I think it's like the Olympics, where like uh, creative people do have to dedicate themselves and sacrifice to really make like top level shit. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I do think that a good number of them were trying to. Abs- I think, yeah. If you're creating art, your the hope is that it's timeless, mm-hmm. kind of. Yeah, I hope this sticks around longer than I do. I think that's pretty common. Damn, that's what I like to hear. Stoner Dads helped me get through a bad breakup. Yeah. 
you think stoner dads will stand the test of time i hope so i kind of in my heart of hearts i kind of think stoner da like this is my secret goal is i want stoner dads to be what bill and ted wanted to be mm -hmm. where it's like this like giant like culturally important like unifying thing where it like kind of like finally met, gets people to just like chill out and i think that's what bill and ted that's what station was trying to tell them that they were going to do in the future mm -hmm. we're eventually going to make the podcast that unites all of humanity that'd be sick <laughs> and i think what if dude what if we had what if we made the awesome. opposite of the joe rogan experience where instead of like creating something that's just so controversial that it makes you billions of dollars we end up not really making much money from it at all but it becomes like a cultural checkpoint for people where it goes okay we're at least not going to slide backwards into depravity and angst. Yeah. We know that at least there we can chill events. this. You know what I mean? That's my, yes. that's my, that's my true, that, in my secret heart. That's what I, that's what I hope for. I think that's definitely possible. I hope so. I, I think mean, so. I, if, I mean, if, if you don't have a lofty goal to tr strive toward and sacrifice for, then I do think you're kind of at risk of becoming a peasant before you know it. Yeah. You're going to be a slow-boiled uh, peasant. That's what it is. And... Um, you're just stuck. You can't get stuck. Yeah, like, you, your imagination starts to fade like a like a time-traveling photograph. Mm -hmm. Like, it, your your ability to, to uh, conceive of something more for yourself just starts to slowly dissipate until, you know... You're you're retiring from a job that you hated and just like hoping social security is enough to pay rent in your like senior living community. That really scares me. <laughs> Doesn't that? It really scares me. I think about that a lot. Like, what if like one day you're just kind of like, I have nothing. I, I'm like, fine you're trying to make a like you're not even like physically, but like mentally, you're just like, there. I have nothing. Kind of. There's nothing in me. Yeah, entering entering like temporal bankruptcy. Mm -hmm is is my my greatest like uh you have i think you have like positive and negative motivators and that's my greatest ne my greatest negative motivator like whatever it is i know i don't want that yeah i know i don't want like i don't know maybe maybe this is all just an excuse for not having a 401k mm. not having any kind of like retirement fund yet i'm i'm going to fix that but like just i don't know i don't know i i I have to remember I don't have any real answers. Yeah. <laughs> I have to remember I'm a fucking idiot and I historically have not gotten anything right. Dude, nobody has any real answers. True. That's the thing. No one knows. There yeah. is, you know why? It's cuz there's no fucking point, dude. What do you mean? Everyone's just kind of like I think that it's there's there's never going to be anything that you like you're Okay, okay. driving to where it's like you're like this is <laughs> it like this is the stopping point for sure that's okay when you're okay so when you start looking for big answers that is maybe you're not going to become a peasant but you're definitely at risk of becoming a twitter brainiac yeah and twitter brainiacs dude they they're they go backwards on the karmic wheel yeah they're going in reverse yeah because that's fucking so counterproductive to anything yeah when you're when you're on twitter going like oh yeah well what about and it's like no oh, no dude no one is having a good time around you you're regurgitating facts your relationships are suffering oh no dude dude i yeah. see it at school all the time the school is dude school is just that's the arena they're regurgitating facts that they probably read on twitter and they're just kind of like well what do you think about this you know yeah well what do you, and then how come 45 percent of all and it's like, and it's like shut the fuck up. <laughs> like what? Yeah, I sit dude. in class all day and I'm just fucking rolling my eyes. No. It's like what the fuck is going on? I can't fucking imagine. How dude. are you a real person? How is this like a thought that you have? I think about that all the time. People say things and like, how is that a thought that you have? And you're like, I'm gonna share this and this is people are gonna be like, oh, good point. Dude, like my my daughter's 15. Her school and peers are trying to condition her for this, and I have to be like, listen, we don't care about Andrew Tate and Greta Thunberg at all. No. If, I, if we're forced to give an opinion on it, it better be funny. Yeah. I don't see. care. Did you see that <laughs> Greta Thunberg was like, she she did like a PR stunt? When, yeah. That was crazy. Well, that was, what my, that was what I was telling her. I was like, she was like, what do, you, what do you, dad, what do you think about the Andrew Tate and Greta Thunberg shit? Because like, I think it's funny that he got owned like that. And I was like, dude, this is all, I was like, Lucy, this is cinema being created for us by the most powerful people in the world. We can't care about it. 
It's like being she's like, owned by Greta Thunberg. He got arrested by the Romanian police. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and I, I had, I, sh I showed her like the fake video of her getting arrested by the German police, yeah. or whatever. I was like, people, pe like whether or not this is completely fabricated or like it just went, like this is a real arrest that went down this way. People are then taking still photographs from this and being like, "Wow, so badass!" And it's like, if you commit any of like your emotion to this, you're you're poisoned. Mm -hmm. You turn green and your life bar starts to drain. Yes. How do you not just see that and just go, "Okay." Yeah, and but I, you know, she's 15. Yeah. She, this is the guidance that I need to be giving her, and I, you know, hopefully I'm not completely fucked up. Yeah. Tim, your 2CB story about the deer introduced me to 2CB. Here's a hit to you on the Lord's Day. Oh, bro. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. That was eye-opening, watching that deer kill itself on psychedelic experimental drugs. Badass. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty fucking nice. <laughs> um, show her Good Shepherd with Matt Damon. I don't even know that. I don't even fucking know that. Me neither. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. We've gone long, guys. We've taken up a lot of your day. Mm. My goodness. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, thank you for being with us, Chris. Thanks, fellas. Thank you, everybody. I guess we should wrap this up. Probably. Oh man. I gotta. I gotta. I had too much fun though. I'm meeting it too. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. I'd. I'd, mu I'd much rather be doing this. This was. This was fantastic. No, I can't. This is such a good time. I, I guess we're gonna ha definitely have to do this again. I would love to. My God. Whenever you want, give me a call. Absolutely, dude. This is wow. All right, friends. Well, uh, I hope. I hope this was a great start to your Sunday. Uh, I don't know. Have dinner with your parents or something. Try sure. to get your dad to make your favorite recipe. For me, I'm going to beg my dad to make chili over egg noodles. Ooh. I'm manifesting chili over egg noodles. I don't see it happening. It probably needs more prep time. But I did for Christmas. I got him a Blackstone. Mm. Is it Blackstone? The flat griddle? Like the, the grill thing? Yeah. Yeah, I got him a Blackstone. So I don't know if he put it together yet, but I'm going to offer to go assemble it for him and then ask him to make cheesesteaks. Fuck yes. So I'm getting a good meal, I think. Fuck I know yes. I have a text message from him I haven't opened yet. Please be about food. <laughs> All right, gang. Uh, I thanks for everything. Thanks for all the support. And uh, damn, more of this stuff for sure. All right, we'll see you guys later this week. Bye, guys. Have a great day. <laughs>